Good afternoon. There we go. I was like, I, I checked this before. I did I did a thing for once. <laughs> Always scared that you're not hair turtles. Anyway. Hi. Um is the game loud to you guys or is it just me? The game is very loud to me. It could it could just be me. Might have up the That's fine, that's fair. If you miss any of the plot points, just ask. It is a bit loud. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it down. If I turn it down like this, it should also turn down for you guys. Keep me keep me updated on that. But not very. Okay. I'm trying not to deafen myself or you guys. I've turned it down a little bit. It should be better now. So, uh, it's been... A month, at least, since I last- more than a month, because it was somewhere halfway through December. Since I last played this game, uh, and I had, during like, uploading the videos onto YouTube, I had like a quick like, where were we? Um, and if I remember correctly, uh, we were at the start of- yeah, at the start of Turnaround Big Top, which was the- Disappearing Magician. But we should get the intro again now. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the show. Prepare to witness a man who has mastered the wonder of flight. The world's greatest magician. The one the only Maximilian Galactica. That is a name. And then he disappears. Which I'm assuming is not supposed to be part of the show. December 26th, Big Berry Circus, Circus Entrance. Oh, Berry Big Circus. It helps if I can read correctly, doesn't it? With this game especially. Wow, that was like being in a dream. Hi, Pearl. I haven't even caught my breath yet. I, I would assume it helps the magic. You know, streamlined. <laughs> Haha, <laughs> that was amazing, wasn't it, Pearly? It was great, there was a dancing bear. <laughs> and a tiger that jumped through a ring of fire, an elephant that rode a giant bull. Not to mention that guy who flew through the air. Oh, she's so adorable and happy. Yeah, Max Galactica. He was absolutely fabulous. Huh? What? Max? Max Galactica, the world's greatest magician. Yeah, I'm a month late, I think, for this uh, case. A magi magician? <laughs> no, a magician. Um, Mr. Nick? Huh? What is it, Pearls? Does magic have anything to do with channeling spirits? I don't think it has anything to do with channeling. You don't know about magic, do you, Pearls? I'm sorry. Oh, Pearl is so cute. I braved the winter cold and took pearls to see the circus. I love that he constantly calls her pearls, not pearl. She's always pearls. Almost Christmas is not Christmas. Yeah. It's just after Christmas, isn't it? Because the 20... No, it's 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 the 26th Boxing Day? I always mess that up. Because the 24th is Christmas Eve, and then the 25th is Christmas Day, and then the 26th Boxing Day, right? In my head, the 25th is Christmas Eve, which is wrong, I think. It's been six months since that terrible incident in Korean Village. We have jumped. And it was during that trying time that I met Pearls. Thankfully, she seems to be recovering from it and it's returning to her normal self. Ah, it's time to go. You're right, we can't miss the last train. 
Oh, I'm trying to remember the other case. It's been a while since we did that case. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I am a little bit oblivious sometimes. We can't miss the last train. Pearls, you remember the train? <laughs> of course I did. Oh, she is so cute. Please tell me she's in the rest of this case, but at the same time I hope she isn't. Because that would mean she is involved somehow and I don't like that. But I don't really understand what everyone means by express train. Well, Nick, see you later. I'll come by to help clean the office. It's gotta be spotless for the new year. Don't worry about it, really. You are going to visit Mr. Nick on New Year's? Maybe. I am glad you will get to spend your New Year's with your special someone. Aw, Pearl. P Pearly! Look, it's time to go. Happy New Year, Mr. Nick. Sorry, Pearls. Mr. Nick has a different special someone. Happy New Year. I really hope it will turn out that way. Yeah, it's never going to be a happy New Year, is it? Right, and go law offices. Did they go to like a very early morning show? Well, today wraps it up. F today wraps it up for this year. I hope I can finish cleaning this place up in one day. Phone call. Hey, hello. This is the right and go law. Nick, it's terrible. <laughs> I can agree with that, turtles. Ah, Maya, perfect timing. Things are terrible here too. Oh no, wait, I've, I'm now messing up dates. This is the 28th of December. God. I'm not awake enough for this game, I think. <laughs> Things are terrible here too. Huh? The office is a terrible mess and I have to clean it up. What are you talking about? Um, my dirty office? What are you talking about? Listen, Nick, you have to turn on the TV. Okay, the TV. Now let's check in at the scene. Huh? What happened? Thank you. We're here at the Berry Big Circus. The Berry Big Circus has become the center of a sensational murder. Wait, who died? I thought the murder... I thought the mystery was that he disappeared. That was just part of the act? God. The scene has created quite a stir among the throngs of excited onlookers. The very... I mean, the Berry Big Circus. That's the circus we went to, right? They're saying that there was a murder? Yeah, they arrested him too. Uh, arrested who? Max! They arrested Max Galactica! Oh, Maximilian Galactica. Fans call him Max. Fair. A popular magician who can fly through the sky at will. Maya said she was a huge fan of Max. Alright, Nick. I'll see you in two hours at the detention center. Huh? What? See you there. You've still got plenty of time to clean up your office later. What? <laughs> Sounds about right, Phoenix. You know what? We'll just go to the detention center. December 28th. Yeah, like, it's two days after they went. Detention center visitor's room. What are they talking about? Why did they arrest Max? You're asking the wrong man for that one, Maya. Maybe he used his magical skills to deal death with a sleight of hand? Maximilian Galactica would never do such a thing. Okay, let's hope he didn't. <laughs> fabulous. What the young lady just said was absolutely fabulous. What a clever girl. Such a fabulous understanding of events. Okay, he said the word fabulous three times in two sentences. Well, not two sentences, but two of these text blocks. This is going to be interesting. What's with all this fabulous talk? Thank you, Phoenix. Sometimes Phoenix and I are very much on the same brain. <laughs> Oh god. Welcome to the visitor's room. It's Max, Nick! Look, it's the real Max Million Galactica! Alright, sweetie, pick a card, any card. Uh, he, he called me sweetie. Nick. <laughs> ah, ha, ha, ha. Time's running out, sweetie. Pick a card, any card. Th this one. Uh huh. I thought you would pick that one, sweetie. The Ace of Hearts. Ah, he got it, he got it. Nick, look, he got it. What can I say, sweetie? You've stolen one of my most valued possessions. One of Maximilian Galactica's hearts. Oh, God. Max. 
Well, time to make this an absolutely fabulous time. Okay, we're back with the fabulous. Max, you should let Nick pick a card. Eh, I don't want to steal one of his hearts. <laughs> and you are... Oh, how silly of me. You must be Sweetie's driver. Her driver. Whatever. Hurry up and pick a card. Any card. Um, I want this one. So, Sweetie, let's be honest here. You came to this visitor's room to visit me, didn't you? Y yes, I'm your biggest fan. Fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. Thank you so much. I don't know what I think about him. On the one hand, he's hilarious. On the other hand, he's already annoying me. I'm like, for Maya, I hope he didn't do it. Also, for the sake of this game, usually means you try and defend somebody innocent. But at the same time, he's just annoying me. <laughs> just hope I don't have to spend too much time talking to him. Hey, um, about my card? Think of this as a souvenir. Well, Nick, I think it's time to get to work. What's the matter, Nick? Why are you looking at the ceiling? I was just thinking about what I should have for lunch. Good uh, good thinking, Phoenix. Sweetie, drop Porcupine Head over there. <laughs> Shower me with your attention, okay? Uh, uh, oh, yes. Absolutely fabulous. God. Absolutely cringe-inducing. Thank you, Phoenix. Let's talk. Max, I was hoping you could tell me a little bit more about yourself. Fabulous. I think we should get to know each other better, too. Why don't you come sit next to me? Um, there's a big piece of security glass between us. Yes. Oh, sweet Jeebus. What in the world? <laughs> yeah. If only I could use magic, then I could make this wall disappear. What is this guy talking about? Anyways, lately you've become awfully famous, haven't you, Max? That's Maximilian to you, porcupine head. Get it straight. Jeez, people nowadays. They get their panties all in a bunch over nothing. Anyway, Maximilian, you won a very prestigious award recently, did you not? I did indeed. It was fabulous. I won the Magician's Grand Prix held by the Association of International Magicians. It's an award that recognizes that I am the most fabuloso of fabulous world magicians. The word fabulous has lost all meaning at this point. There was a trophy and a bust. It was fab. I mean, it was an amazing day. <laughs> Thank you for recognizing that the word fabulous has lost meanings. Ha, whoa, that's incredible. Isn't it? I'm certifiably the greatest magician in the world. I'm going to guess he didn't win a trophy for most modest magician. You are signed to an exclusive contract with the Barry Big Circus, correct? That's the long and short of it. You sure do your research, sweetie. I'm impressed. You just can't watch a magician on TV, you know? Magic is so fabulous, you have to see it with your own eyes, sweetie. I do have to say I agree with that. A lot of magic. I mean, TV show magic is also cool, but I feel like some magic is just better in person. Because then it's like, there is absolutely nothing they could be doing with like camera angles. That's why TV show magic is different, because then if you do stuff with camera angles, it can look cool. But it's a different type of magic in my opinion. You're right, you're so right. However, the circus, it's a dinosaur, a thing of the past. Nowadays, no one even cares about what goes on there. Huh? What do you mean? That's why I signed a contract. That's why you signed a contract? Thanks to me, the Berry Big Circus is fabulously popular. People come out in droves to catch a glimpse of the magic of Max Galactica. I revived the dinosaur that is the circus. Do you think big of yourself? But to me, it was just another magic trick. Isn't it just wonderful, sweetie? Y yes I made all the old crusty circus performances obsolete. But I kind of like the circus performances. Maya looks a bit down. Don't meet your heroes? Tell me what happened at the Berry Big Circus. Ah, last night, the ringmaster was murdered. Ugh. The ringmaster? You mean Russell Berry? Someone smashed him over the head, I hear. He was slumped over on the ground. Even though it was the middle of the night, the police presence was fabulous. The police questioned me at length. Questioned you about what? About everything. I was the last one to see the ringmaster before he was murdered. 
I saw him last evening in his hair room. So then why were you arrested? Arrested? Don't make an anthill into a mountain, sweetie. They just wanted to consult with me on matters, that's all. And that's why you're behind the security glass, Nick. I don't think Max understands how serious this is. She is right, I think I should shock him back to reality. Before the murder, you met with the ringmaster. Uh-huh. What did you talk about? Things that aren't for your ears. Ooh. Maya, would you please ask him? What did you talk about with the ringmaster, Max? It was nothing, small talk really. We were just having a chat about my salary. Salary? I am the one bringing in the crowds. I think that I should be compensated as such. You agree, don't you? Y yes That's all you talked about. Of course, it was a fabulous chat. Oh, here we uh, three of them? Just fabulous. I mean, ah, uh, now he's got me saying it. What's the matter, Nick? You look all bent out of shape. Okay. Yeah, so I'm gonna have to present- yeah, okay. If I present him that- What is that badge? Is it used in a disappearing act? I'm not a magician, Max. I'm an attorney. An attorney? Then why are you wasting your time talking to me? He isn't wasting his time, Max. You're- Okay, okay, relax, sweetie. You're just a little over-anxious, I think. <laughs> dun dun dun- yeah, exactly. I feel like the, the, the three locks are literally just dun dun dun. <laughs> Each lock is a dun. Whimper. <laughs> Anyways, I've been curious about something for a while now. What's that? Why do you keep looking at me with such a sad look on your face, sweetie? But because you've been arrested for murder. <laughs> oh, don't be ignorant. They wouldn't arrest someone like me. Then why are you in here? Why is that? Obviously because I am the fabulous Maximilian Galactica. Dude. So? I'm the very big star of the very big circus. God. And that means I'm rich. I'm paid fabulous sums. Which means what? Max. Quit joking around. You've got to be pulling my magic wand. The police aren't really serious about all this, are they? Oh, buddy. They don't arrest people as a joke. <laughs> Look at Max, he's crushed. Well, he needed to wake up and smell the coffee. This is serious business. Um, um, yes. I agree, he should shut up. <laughs> Pork, I mean, sir, you're a lawyer, right? Huh? Oh, yeah, I'm an attorney. Please help me. I didn't kill nobody. Oh god. I love how his left lash, or right lash, however you want to look at it, is straight up just down his face now. Didn't kill nobody? I may be more spoiled than a hog in a hamburger muck pit, but a killer? That's insane. I, I, I could never. M Max? I swear. I just wanted to pay off my daddy's debt. He's back on the farm. Okay, okay, I'll take your case. R really really uh, thank you much you all sure are nice folks oh god um max yes what's your real name it's billy bob johns <laughs> what's the matter maya he's really just a country bumpkin i'm i'm sorry to say maya but that's not surprising. Ahem. I must apologize for not being my absolute fabulous self just now, sweetie. Huh? huh? Mr. Turney. Yes. A few minutes ago, you took one of my cards, didn't you? Um, now that he mentions it, I did take a card. It was a ten of hearts, right? What? How'd he... He got it right again. It is very much never meet your heroes, poor Maya. What can I say? You two, you've stolen some of my most valued possessions. Ten of Maximilian Galactica's hearts. You sure do have a lot of hearts, don't you? Ha ha ha, I'm putting my faith in you, sweetie. 
He didn't just call me sweetie, did he? That almost makes me want to not defend him. I know the game, yada yada, but I'm just like, dude. <laughs> All right, let's make this an absolutely fabulous case. Come on, Nick. <laughs> okay. We're, we're gonna have to figure out what that talk was actually about, wasn't it? No way. Very big circus, circus entrance. We're here again. Yep, but this time we are here for work. It hasn't been that long since the crime, so the police are still on the scene. Let's find someone who might know something about what happened. Sounds like a plan. Let's first examine. Look how massive this cardboard cutout thing is. Look, look, it's Max! Even when you don't want to see him, poof, he's right in front of you. Sure, the sign says Berry Big Circus, but looking around, it might as well be Cirque du Galactica. The stars on his cheeks sure are dreamy. How about I draw a star on your cheek, Nick? I've got a marker. Nah, nah, it's alright. Ticket booths? The box office. Where they sell all the tickets for the circus. They also sell programs. I forgot to buy one when we came to the circus last time. So then why don't you buy one now? Hmm, sounds like a plan. Oh no, it looks like I forgot my wallet. If you want me to buy it for you, just ask me already. <laughs> you know, I'd never do that to you, Nick. Uh... You wouldn't ask, or you wouldn't want us to buy it for you? Hmm, this door must lead to the lodging house. No entry to unauthorized personnel. Do you really need to say no entry if no one's actually entering? It's almost like a zen riddle, isn't it, Nick? I'm not even going to justify that question with a response. I bet all of the stars stay at that lodging house. Ooh, banners. Also with the face mask. Those streamers do a nice job introducing the circus performers. Max. Max. Maximilian Galactica and his comical comrades. You know, you don't really see too many streamers nowadays, do you? You're right. I haven't seen one in ages. I bet they stopped using them due to the little kids climbing up to the top. Um, I don't think that was why. Circus stand. The very big top is so very b cough enormous. <laughs> yep, one look at the huge tent looming over you and you realize this is the circus. I know, I know. I really get your blood pumping, doesn't it? Nick, the entrance is right here. Maya, the circus is closed today. No clowns, no elephants, no shows. I know that. Nick, you can get your picture taken with Dali the elephant. There's no Dali. Not today. I know that too. Oh well. I'll just have to take a picture with whoever I stumble across. It's not like we're here on business or anything. <laughs> nice and serious, Maya. It's a snack stand. They have hot dogs, hamburgers and drinks. Not to mention candy and popcorn. They've even got snow cones. Who would eat snow cones in the middle of winter? Nick, do you think we can buy some snow cones? She, she, she eats snow cones in the middle of winter. I would too, to be honest. Look around. There's tons of snow piled up all around here. Yay! Wait a second. There's no syrup, though. I want syrup. <laughs> Hopefully she doesn't notice that discolored snow in the corner. That's not syrup. Ah, <sighs> God. Nice and high brow. <laughs> Have I seen everything now? I think I've seen everything. Time to go inside. I want to first go into the big top. I think that would be more interesting first. Very big circus, big top. The circus stage sure doesn't look this small from out of the audience. Whoa, this is where they all perform, isn't it? Nick, do some somersaults. <laughs> I'm not doing any somersaults. Why not? You look like you'd be great at it. Why do I look like I'd be great at somersaults? Oh god, is there a lion? Huh, Nick? It wasn't me. 
Tiger! I was almost there. He's coming this way! Okay. Did we just die? Nick? You're too young to die! Nick! Stay! Stay! Heal! <laughs> I'm still here. I'm not dead yet. <laughs> Nick! Nick, are you okay? <laughs> Scared you, didn't I? Regent is such a cute tiger. Who is she? Isn't he? <laughs> yeah, the end, of, the end of all these games. What's the matter? You two sure are quiet. Don't what's the matter me? N Nick, he almost died there. Ha, ah, he wasn't anywhere close to getting hurt, let alone dying. This little tiger hardly ever bites people. And besides, people normally never get to play with a wild tiger, right? So if you think about it, you're actually really lucky. Huh? You agree, don't you? I I guess. What, what, what do you mean, you guess? Why are you agreeing with her? Woohoo, your costume. Uh, It's cute. I want to try it on. C costume? You mean my clothes? You don't mind letting me try it on, right? Uh, I guess not. Oh god, who is she? Really? You're the best! Wow, the tables turned quickly on that one. So much for the tiger thing. Oh, I forgot to introduce myself. Yeah, who are you? I'm Regina Berry, the renowned animal tamer of the Berry Big Circus. My name is Maya Faye. I'm a spirit medium. Phoenix Wright, attorney at law. When you put us up next to an animal tamer, I bet we really look odd. <laughs> nice to meet you. Uh, likewise. Hey, Regina, what do you know about what happened last night? You mean the murder? Uh-huh. My dad was murdered. Aw. Oh, I see. Wait, what did she just say? So, the ringmaster was your... Yep. I mean, I sort of assumed several some familiar relationship with her last name being Barry. The ringmaster was my dad. I'm so sorry about what happened to him. Why do you say you're sorry? Huh? Anyways, everyone was here practicing last night. Even your dad? Yes, everyone was here. We finished up around 10pm. After that, everyone went off on their own. I was the only one who stayed around here. Why did you do that? I was playing with Regent. Regent? So she was with that beast? I do like Regent as a name for a tiger. That's, that's a nice name for a tiger. That's when the police showed up. When they took me to check things out, that was that. For someone whose father was just murdered. She seems awfully perky. I wish she would tell us more about her dad. That's incredible that you are an animal tamer. If you say so. It has to be really scary. Scary? Why? Huh? Regent isn't scary. He's cute. Ever since Leon died, Regent has been my best friend. Leon? I enjoyed an eating. Yes, Leon the Lion. That makes sense. Leon the Lion, Regent and Regina. Interesting name choices. Leon? He died? Yes, actually he was killed. My dad killed him. What? Why did he do that? I'm not sure why he did it. It's tough not to get charmed when she looks at you with those innocent eyes. Okay. Okay. She has nothing more to say except for the fact that she's very flippant about her dad's death. The seats are kind of far away, don't you think? They are, but it also means that lots of people can fit in the big top. He's right, we can fit 500 people into a show. 500? That's amazing. Flying around above that many people is a real rush. At least that's what Max said. 
There doesn't seem to be anything here that can help us. Not a single clue. You know I've been meaning to ask you. What exactly do you mean when you say clue? What are you looking for? A bloody chainsaw, for instance. Well, there's definitely not one of those here. Hey, it's a rope! Good, good. Probably for tightrope walking. That's a bit strange. There weren't any tightrope walkers in the show when we saw it. Ah, a ladder. It's just a step ladder. What's the difference? They do the same thing, right? I think you should stick with the basic facts of the matter. Oh, uh, okay. It's not even worth arguing with her on this one. The seats are kind of far away, don't you think? They are, but it also means that lots of people can fit. That already did that. Look, that's where Max comes out during the show. I've got to admit, that was a pretty cool effect. We're planning for more to start coming out of the line during the show. For me to start coming out. That's great, Regina. Yeah, I will ride on Regent's back and jump out of the lion's mouth. I want to try it too. That sounds like a good show, to be honest. I'll ride on Nick's back and jump out of the lion's mouth. Sometimes I wonder about this girl. To her, Nick is just everything. Friend, colleague, pack mule. Ah, that's not the button I went to press. Whoa, those lights are huge. I love lights. Whenever I appear under the spotlight, everyone claps for me. That's because everyone knows that you're cute. <laughs> no, I'm not cute. You're cute. Th me? Of course. I'm sure you'd make an incredible heroine. Really? You think so? Nick, did you hear that? Me? A heroine? What about Nick, Regina? Hmm, Nick? He's no hero, is he? Ouch. Thanks a lot, Maya. Okay then. Nothing else we can talk to her about. I don't think presenting her with the authorities badge is necessarily needed. You know what we're gonna do it anyway. What about this? What can you tell me? Um, I'm not really good at figuring out hard things. Really? You too? I understand exactly what you mean. I never expected Maya to make a new friend in a strange place like this. Okay then, let's move. Who's gonna be here? Lodging House Plaza. This seems to be a dorm where all the performers in the circus stay. Really? So we might run into that stoogy clown here, right? He's so kooky. Girls supporting girls. Exactly, girls supporting girls in stupidity. Let's go. Ah, it's you two. Gumshoe! Gumshoe! Ah, Detective Gumshoe! How is it you guys always seem to know when I'm working at crime scene, pal? Because you're always working, detective. Well, I'd rather not be always working. But with crime, you don't make your own hours. If I have to be at the circus anyway, I want to see the lion tamer and the tightrope. However, no matter where I go, the show is always the same. Dead body, stage left. Nick, Nick, he complained. <laughs> That's a rarity. Let's get back to business now, okay? So what happened? Oh, do you know who will be the prosecutor in court tomorrow? Of course, it will be Miss Von Karma. Oh, she's back. Uh, she isn't gonna hit me with her whip again, is she? What do you have to worry about? You only have to see her in court. <laughs> when she shows up at the precinct, the sound of that whip never ends, pal. All of the precinct is just traumatized by the whip. <laughs> Detective Gumshoe, I'm sure Miss Von Karma really, Miss Von Karma is really interesting, all but. There's someone else I'd rather talk about. Like who? Like Mr. Edgeworth, of course. There we go. How is he? You know, Nick's true rival, Miles Edgeworth. What in the world happened after I went back home? M Mr. Edgeworth, you haven't heard what happened to him? Ooh, it's gonna come out now. Nick won't tell me. Well, to be honest, I'm not at liberty to tell you either. Let's just say he's not around anymore. No! He's not around? 
Nick, what does he mean Mr. Edgeworth isn't around? Exactly what he said. He's not around. Edgeworth is gone. Don't say his name again, okay? What what happened? N Nick? The ringmaster of the circus was murdered, wasn't he? Yep, last night around 10pm. He died outside in a cold. A pretty sad way to go out, if you ask me. Pal. It was rather cold. This is the scene of the crime, pal. The body was found right over there. Right about where you are standing now. Ugh. Ho, ho, ho. Surprised you didn't die. I'm not laughing. Excuse me, but do you mind telling me what happened to the victim? He was killed by a blow to the noggin, pal. Yeep. It's pretty clear cut as far as murderers go. M murders go. He was discovered quickly. But, but, there's just one thing that doesn't quite fit. Ooh, here we go. Ha! There's always seems to be something that doesn't quite fit. What was this one thing that just doesn't quite fit? The thing you mentioned earlier. <laughs> Welcome back, turtles. <laughs> we have girls supporting girls in stupidity. What was this one thing that just didn't quite fit? The thing you mentioned earlier. Did you fully miss the lion tamer? Or the, the, the animal tamer? Turtles. If, if so, we need to go back. You need to meet her. Footprints, pal. Footprints. Footprints? Oh. Interesting. Look at this picture of the crime scene. Thank you for censoring his head, basically. What's this? This wooden box under the body. Oh, you saw the animal tamer. She became friends with Maya. That's the girl supporting girls. <laughs> no clue, pal. Some forensic experts took it back and are examining it now. And, and, what is so mysterious about the footprints? Whoa, calm down now. Take a good look at the footprints in this picture. Yeah, with the tiger, yeah. The victim's footprints are on the scene. That's right, pal. The problem is... No other footprints. The killer's footprints aren't there. Bingo. Where did the killer come from? And where did the killer run off to? Is that why Maximilian is suspicious? Because he can, like, supposedly fly? Obviously, there is no way the killer committed this crime while flying. A flying culprit? That's when something just clicked in my head. That there's no way. Flying is impossible. That's right. Flying is impossible. Absolutely impossible. Haha. <laughs> That's with the what's with the hollow laugh, pal? I meant nothing by it, pal. Better stated, it means I don't want to talk about it. Maybe I could get some info about Max out of him? Crime photo added to the court record. So this is where it happened. This is the only place the snow has been trounced upon. The murderer was sloppy leaving all these prints all over. No, 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 Here's the one who left- we're the ones who left the prints. An investigation can be a messy thing sometimes. What? I also slipped and fell in that spot over there. The other detectives all got a good laugh when the prosecutor whipped me. Thank god there was all this snow around to bring down the swelling. It's great to know that the police aren't worried about preserving the evidence. God. This is some kind of poster for something. There's some evidence under the tarp over there. Hey, watch it, pal. The killer is behind that tarp. Well, uh, ho, ho, ho. Got ya. I was just kidding. Ho, ho, ho. God, this man laughs funnily. Ooh, ball. The safety lights around the circles are kept on all night long, so they should have been on at the time of the murder. So you're saying the murder took place in the light? How strange. How strange indeed. Hmm. This year, I finally won an air conditioner. What? You didn't have an air conditioner? Did you write your Triceratops to work too? And what do you mean you won an air conditioner? You didn't buy it? I can afford one of those things. But I got lucky and won it as a door prize at the annual police Christmas party. 
they really pay you peanuts, don't they? Peanuts? I don't even get paid enough for peanut butter, let alone peanuts. Poor police. Anything else? Nope. Okay. Uh... Hmm. Can I present him with this? See if he can know something? That's... that's the ringmaster. It's a shame what happened. He was going to be like a father to me. He was going to be, he just wasn't yet. Poor Gumshoe, yeah. Hmm. Oh. December 28th, writing Kaula offices. Alright, we've got lots of things we have to look into. No time for slacking. Let's get going. Okay. Huh? What's the matter? You seem down. Maximilian Galactica, who would have guessed he was country bumpkin? Like, that's a bad thing. So now, what do we do? Huh? There's still lots of things we can do. Go to the scene of the crime, talk to witnesses, gather evidence. Yeah, I guess you're right. We still don't even know what happened in the first place. We don't have enough information to make a case yet. I could have sworn I've heard that before. Well, we never have enough information. <laughs> Just admit it, you don't have a clue what happened. Is there anything... No. What about this? What can you tell me? Um, I'm not really good at figuring out hard things. Really? You too? I understand exactly what you mean. I never expected Maya to make a new friend in a strange place like this. Okay. That is the girl supporting girls we were talking about earlier. What am I missing? on, you flashed that badge at me so many times it doesn't work anymore. Why don't you try wearing a different badge every now and again? Well, I do have a steel samurai badge with me. How about that one? I'll only wear it if Detective Gumshoe carries a steel samurai police badge. Then it's a deal. I hear that Detective Gumshoe has a fat fairy badge. Well, don't look at me like that. You're making me nervous. Okay. Hmm. Because we need to figure out what Max was talking to the... Uh, the, the ringmaster about. There's not that many locations yet. All of these are usually the same. Camera, got a camera. Max keeps sneaking glances up at the security camera on the wall. I wonder if he's still trying to be a star. This guard monitors the visitor's room. He's so quiet you could almost forget he wasn't there for anything. He pushed up against the wall, kind of like a magnet on a refrigerator. Fair. What am I not checking out? What am I missing here? Because I need to talk to him about that meeting. But there was three locks. And I know we can, like, you need to unlock, you can unlock them one at a time. But I need, like, proof that he was, that he's lying. Don't I? Basically. If I remember correctly. It's fabulous magic. It costs enormous sums of money. Sums that will boggle your mind.
That's why you went to his room that night. I went to ask him for a fabulous raise. I wonder how people can lie with such a straight face. So I need to find proof. Also, that outfit in this weather. <laughs> I need to find some kind of proof that he didn't ask for a raise, don't I? Isn't that how this bit works? I'm trying to remember. Uh, cause it, what am I missing? I'm already stuck. I've got to present Max to Regina. Oh, okay. Yes, I can present people. Thank you. I... I forgot that I can present people to people. It's Max! Hey, where is Max now anyway? Y you don't know? Nope. He's been arrested. He was charged with the murder of your father. It's okay. Nick and I will help him. Max isn't the guy, is he? I mean, the criminal? Of course he's not. I'm worried about so many things right now. Um, like what? <laughs> well, that was... What's on your mind? Regina, what's the matter? What's on your mind? I'll tell you, Maya, but just you. Ah. Um, well... What? Really? And then... Oh my, that's incredible, Regina. Come on, Nick. There's no reason to pout. Don't worry about me. Regina told me that someone professed their love to her. Ooh. P -p -p professed their love? Not only that, it was Maximilian Galactica. Ooh, the plot thickens. I wonder how many people have stolen one of his hearts anyway. And then, on the exact same day, another person professed their love to, for her as well. What? Who was it? Someone named Trilo. Trilo? Apparently, he is a tenor who sings in the circus. Hmm, haven't met him yet. Regina seems to be quite the hit with the men in the circus. I mean, she is adorable. She must have some sort of strange power over them. You're not kidding. Two people in one day. Even I want to profess my love for her. Me too. She's so cute. Okay. So we're... Oh! Look, we have the victim and ringmaster of the Barry Big Father, Regina Barry's father. Okay. So we're looking for a trilo. Did I forgot to tell talk about it? Let's talk. Wait, if we now go talk to <laughs> Yeah, it is a great mustache. Can we talk to you about? Can can we present you, Regina? Ah, my sweetie pie. She must be really lonely with me all cooped up in here. Actually, she was laughing and rolling around with her tiger. Yeah, I've still got people. I, that's the thing. I keep forgetting that I can present people. She is my special someone, and I'm her special someone. Uh-huh. Very complex. <laughs> I'm just gonna present everybody to her. What about this person? Unfortunately, I don't take on apprentices. I mean, just look at the face on this one. It's not what I'd call fabulous. That's awfully harsh. Okay. I've presented him with everybody I could. Let's present her with her dad. I don't know why, but I feel like... After practice was over, dad went right back to his room. His room? Yes. That door right over there leads to the ringmaster's room. There we go. Hmm. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, the button. Oh, my my remote just <laughs> my controller just fully turned off. Come on. I don't know why, but he went off to his room in a hurry. I wonder what happened. The ringmaster's room. It's probably a good idea to check it out for myself. Did you did you catch the bit about Edgeworth turtles? We can go to the ringmaster's room now. There we go. Ooh. Big top ringmaster's room. This was the ringmaster's room. Yes, this room belonged to the victim. Which means this must be where Max met the ringmaster last night. Good afternoon. Now that you mention it, that is what he said. I wonder what. Hmm, that's an interesting poster. Ah, it's a poster of Max. I want it, I want it. Nick, I want it. So we had a chat with Gumshoe about Edgeworth because Maya asked where he went and basically the implication is don't expect him to return <laughs> as of right now, which is of course sad. I want to get out of here. Let's go. Well, let's start from left to right. It's a table for guests. There are some papers scattered on top. Ah, look at this. Max's salary is written on this piece of paper. There we go. Yikes. What, what is it? I didn't know that a magician. This salary is incredible. I know. She looks like she's about to ready to pass out from shock. How much is it? How much is it? That much? Incredible, huh? You can say that again. This must be the paper they used to negotiate Max's salary. The ringmaster signed and dated it. What's the matter with Nick? Max definitely got a raise. But this document is dated a week ago. Ringmaster's paper added to the court records. Okay, that's one of the things we're definitely going to use to prove. It seems our love is not enough. I think. Let's hope he returns at some point. That's going to be one of the locks, at least. Ta -da. Ew. There's mud caked on the table. Someone with terrible manners must have put their shoes up on the table. Ooh. Oh. Nick, don't even think about it. I wasn't. How uncouth do you think I am anyway? Okay, there's some posters. There's a lot of posters here, don't you think? There are indeed. So many posters that they aren't likely to miss one, are they? Maya, we're supposed to be the honest ones around here. But, but, you didn't even notice that I took one. Ah, <sighs> she already swiped one. Ha, <sighs> ha. You're incorrigible, you know that? Famous symbols. Can we look at the symbols? What are his famous symbols? Like the feather, the card, and the white... Roses? Is that the three famous symbols? Or is that just me trying to look for something? Anything else? Look at all the stars on this poster. This must have been the poster they used to promote their public appearances. Posters are the way to go, aren't they? What do you mean? We should make posters to promote our law firm. <laughs> Spine-tingling legal action, mind-numbing legalese, you will say, wow, I feel like that is the wrong message to send. Or perhaps, hold it, don't miss out on a stunning life or a death courtroom thrill ride. With those taglines, our law firm would sink faster than the Titanic. Exactly. Trophy gaze. Nick, look at all the cute trophies. Indeed, just look at all the awards this circus has won. Like, all county quiz champions, ringmasters association, mini golf master. Beer belly balloon bounce champ, pet grooming grand prix. None of these are circus related. Whoa, the ringmaster was multi-talented in ways I could have never imagined. I'm trying to pour tea and play a game. That's not a good option. Give me a sec. Okay. Ooh, cute picture. This is strange. Everything else looks nice, but this desk looks old and cheap. There's a really big photo on the desk. It's a picture of Regina and her father, the ringmaster. He really loved her, didn't he? Regina was lucky to have such a wonderful father.
Nick, look at all the photos lined up on the wall. It's like a guided tour of the circus's history. This is so cool. It seems like there were so many happy memories. Maybe we should do this sort of thing at our office. We can put up pictures of all the clients who have been found not guilty. And what if we had a client who was found guilty? Um, we'll just pretend like they didn't exist. How's that? Nick, now you've got me thinking about losing cases. Why did you do that? <laughs> whoopsies. No, not really whoopsies. Ooh. All of these frames look the same. They almost look like thank you cards. It looks like every year the ringmaster made donations to charity. To the Robot Clown Research Center. You're kidding, right? What? They may be a perfectly reputable charity in the field of advanced tomfoolery. What is a Robot Clown charity? This is where the ringmaster applied his makeup. It's quite a collection of the most understated colors. Shocking pink, for example. This one says it is 100% all natural organic mascara. And this one says sensitive enough for a baby, strong enough for a mime. The ringmaster must have been really concerned about skincare. Very metrosexual. You may not know this, but they call this a tailcoat. And they call this the face of someone who already knew that. Hmm. What? A scrap of white paper sticking out of the coat pocket. Huh? Where? Where? Calm down, Maya. You can't just go rummaging through people's coats. Ah, uh, you always make me feel like I'm doing something wrong. It is because you are doing something wrong, but at the same time, I feel like that scrap of paper should be checked out. I think I've checked everything here. Okay then. Hmm. Is there anything else I can present her in people? No, okay. Oh, wrong place. I'm gonna present gumshoe with basically everybody involved just to see what he has to say about everybody it looks like Ma Ma Max Max is the most unpopular guy in the circus tent you know what they say a bad attitude follows you everywhere hmm he's a bit arrogant but he didn't seem that bad but just because someone has a bad attitude doesn't make them a criminal it's not just his attitude I've got proof pal huh he left something at the scene of the crime. One of his magician's trademarks. An incredibly well-made silk hat. Well, it does have very classy decorative elements. Silk hat added to the court record. Made to order hat that is a fabulous a, a symbol of Max's fabulousness found at the crime scene. There we go. A cloak, silk hat and white roses as his signature symbols. I got I guessed one of them. Pretty mundane, aren't they? Who cares if they're mundane? At least they are easy to understand. I must have hit a nerve. That's what he said. Who said? The eyewitness. Eh? T tell us about the eyewitness. Tell us about the eyewitness, please. Um, so about the eyewitness. Ho, 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 you know I'm not going to tell you about that. That's a prosecution's trump card. Hmm, <clears throat> oh well. Oh, I just remembered. What? I forgot to mention that you two are barred from entering that lodging house. See you in a bit. Huh? Why is that? Oh, no reason. Just something I remembered to tell you. It must be because that's where the eyewitness is. Let's check it out. Don't you dare, pal. I've gotten a Davids from most of the performance at this circuit. They are certainly a strange bunch of characters. You don't say. Well, not strange than, stranger than you, I suppose. Mm, that was cold. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was just messing around. I've gone. Okay, yeah, so. Yeah, okay. I 
think. Moe's room. It's a clown. First floor, Moe's room. I wonder whose room this is. The name tag on the door says Moe. I'd say. I guess he's not here. Whoa, it's a real mess in here. My room's probably worse though. Oh well, I give up. We'll have to come back later. I'm gonna say that Moe is a clown. Awesome! Look at these shoes! They're great! Forget the shoes. Check out the great gag banana peel. You sure it wasn't Moe's snack after lunch? Are you blind? Look at how many scratches there are from people slipping on it. The, the bed has a clown face on it. Moe's got an excellent pair of pajamas laid on his bed in an excellent manner. What? Those are pajamas? You mean he goes to bed dressed as a clown? Ooh. All those clown costumes lined up like that. I don't know about you, but it's creepy. Look at the collection he's got. It's incredible. It must be a collection of clown costumes from around the world. Oh, I almost forgot. What is it now? She better not want me to try one of those on. I was thinking of starting a costume collection myself. I'll call it World Spirit Channels. We can display it in our office. In our office? As soon as you start paying the bills, you can say that. This chair. Moe seems to be a voracious reader. Look at all the hard books he has here. Clowns for dummies, the jokes on you. Treat your peons right. And the classic funny jokes are funny. Whoa, Moe is very studious. The jokes on you, huh? Tee hee, clown equipment is so funny looking. <laughs> he's got a balancing ball, a unicycle, he's even got a trampoline. But they're all broken. Maybe he was just a little too excited during practice. Who knows with that guy? Maybe that's part of the gag? Uh, okay, um, my controller disconnected again. I'm not moving that. Okay, there we go. I don't know what's going on with my controller today, guys. I'm sorry. What? The, there's a string of carrots here? How strange. The carrots seem to come in all different shapes. Weird. I'm gonna quickly check what's wrong with my controller. Where's the battery? Ooh, the battery could be almost dead. It might be that. Okay, we're gonna keep an eye on the battery. I can't tell if Moe just likes carrots or if he's using them for some sort of gag. Look at the ceiling. It looks like someone punched a hole in it. You're right. I wonder what happened. Hmm. I don't even want to imagine what goes on in here. Okay, then. Stuff is broken. There's carrots hanging. And there's a hole in the ceiling. Interesting combo. Nick, you can see the scene of a crime from here. You can even tell that the ground has been disturbed. It's right in front of his window, about 30 feet away. So it happened in a light. Okay, since um, Max's, like statement pieces are literally a hat and a cape. I'm gonna assume that his eyewitness is purely based on the hat and the cape and that whoever actually committed the crime purposely tried to like blame Max by wearing the hat and the cape. But since this game is very good at like left, right and center punching you with plot twists, there's gonna be a lot of things happening before that is gonna be the release, the result, I think. Very early predictions here. I guess it wouldn't have been strange for someone to have seen a crime from here. No, that that is fair. We'll move then. Ooh. Back to the entrance. Huh? Hey Nick, look over there. What? There's someone over there. Uh, excuse me? Who are you? Hello. Whoa, he sure is a quiet one. Excuse me! Ha ha ha, me? Yes, you work at the circus, don't you? No, I'm just your everyday average Joe. An average Joe who just happens to hang out at the circus? I don't think so. Y yes, I am. I've got nothing to do with that's going on here. He's lying, like any regular person would hang around the circus, dressed like that. I'm an attorney. My name is Phoenix Wright. 
I am a spirit medium. My name is Maya. Well, I um, just happen to be um, passing by. I don't suppose you happen to be some kind of carny? Not a c carny. I'm a p performer, actually. I'm a v v ventriloquist. That explains why he doesn't like talking. Ventriloquist. <laughs> I'm Benjamin v v Woodman. Your last name is Woodman? Y yes, that's right. But everyone calls me b b Ben. Ah, yes, yes, yes. That's your alias, right? I believe they call it a stage name. What happened? Excuse me, Ben? Uh, yes, you mean me? About the murder, I'd like to talk to you about the details, if I may. R really? I'm just a regular normal guy. I don't uh, know... Uh, uh. This guy's so nervous, he's creeping me out. Nick, cheers up. Just try and smile. Would you mind telling us something about Max? Maximilian Galactica? M M Max? He he's n not very n nice. Did he just say that Max is not very nice? Uh, uh, ow, M my head hurts. Yikes, I hope he's okay. It sounds like he just popped a gasket. Ben, so you're a ventriloquist? I I'm j just a r regular g guy. <laughs> he already told us that you were a ventriloquist. Oh, y yes. Nick, don't yell at him. You can't do that. I can't help it. He's making me nervous. Ben, would you mind showing me some of your skills as a ventriloquist? Well, I... R right. No. My... Ah. Uh, I... Why? Oh, he's contagious. Would you mind taking a look at this? Um, I, I, I guess we won't need you to look after this after all. Ah, wrong button. Would you mind taking a look at this? Okay, no. Okay. He is actually useless. Then we're gonna have to present him to other people, I'm guessing. We'll just present him to everybody. You can't be too thorough, right? My remote dried again. I'm gonna go get some batteries. I'll be right back. I'm back. I hope this helps. I've got an affidavit from most performers. Okay, he can give us nothing. Da, da, da. Yep, okay. So he can tell us everything. So let's go show her him. That guy. His name is Ben, right? Huh? You don't know him? I don't know. He didn't really catch my eye. Welcome back. He's friends with Trillo, right? Wait. Were the ones asking the question around here? Okay, that was... Not too useful. But what if we show this dude him? Maybe he could tell us something. Ooh. I was gone for a little bit, didn't uh, so I had the mic muted because my controller kept dying, so I had to replace the batteries. 
Should have done that. Should have checked that before streaming. But oh well. So the birds were just going tweet tweet, and that's the only sound the game was making. I think. Huh? Max isn't here. He must be in questioning. Ah, oh, I wanted to see a magic trick. He should be back in a little bit. I guess so. Okay then. How can we get information out of him? Would you mind it? Okay, we're gonna- Oh wait! If I- What if we try- Could we find his puppet? Oh, look at that. Hello? Oh, Gablamo. Huh? Congratulations, you're the big wiener. The one millionth visitor to the room of Mr. Moe, Curls, aka me. Earplugs. Must find earplugs. To celebrate this momentous occasion, would you care for an organic grape? Just one. Did you get my joke right there? Ha ha ha! Okay. I well, don't give you more than one. Um. No, no, no. If it was funny, it is your duty as a human being to laugh. People who don't laugh are usually last seen in Lansing. Catch my drift? Dude. <laughs> um, Maya? Ah ha 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 This is like some Faustian nightmare. <laughs> Come on, it was funny. Clowns are always funny in my book. In my book, they're just funny looking. <laughs> you sure do have great taste in clothes, girly. Look at that garb. You just look like Greta Garb. Oh. I'm going home. No, Nick, you can't. You know, I can excuse a bad joke or two, but this stooge keeps laughing at his own jokes. That's what I object to. Okay, okay, I get it, but you have to admit he is kind of funny. I've gotten none of his jokes. Is that my problem, or are they just not good jokes? No, I do not have to admit that, because he isn't. Okay, can we talk to you? Could you please tell us more about the Berry Big Circus? It's a very big story. D you sure you got I'm ugh. you sure you got that kind of time? Any hits just keep on coming. Sigh. This circus has been in business for 20 years. I don't get them good. Thank you. I'm not the only one. I I was like feeling stupid. I was like am I not getting them or are they really just supposed to be awful? We all performed under the guidance of the ringmaster Russell Berry. 20 years. Wow. Working in the circus is never easy, especially nowadays. With movies, TV and bowling, there's just too much competition. But, but I love the circus. I love it too. That is why I've been here for 20 years. Thank you. <laughs> we, will, we work hard to keep the show running. No one sends in the clowns on us. Nick, he just made a joke. Laugh. Har, 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 har. <laughs> The ringmaster was a real big shot in the circus world, a real class act. Even when there were no customers, Russell would use his own money to pay me. Because he knew that I had a family to care for. He was happy to take care of his employees. I see, that is that is sweet. How could anyone do that to such a wonderful man? That is one angry clown. Oh my god, I only just realized that the mouth on his hat matches his mouth. Moe. <laughs> wiggity, 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 what? Uh, I'm sure, Mo I'm sorry, Moe. Nick was born without a sense of humor. Don't worry about it. How can you fault someone for being born that way? Let's talk about the murder. Ah, let's see. It must have taken place around 10 p.m. last night. After rehearsals were finished, I was tuckered out, so I came back here. After I went to bed, that's when I caught a peek of it. Caught a peek? Of the crime, just as we suspected. This guy is the eyewitness to the crime. 
The ringmaster was truly ahead of his time. He would always add new elements to the show. New elements? When you've been a performer for a long time, your act starts getting a bit stale. Hmm. I realize that even my act can get a bit long in the tooth. Sometimes my jokes can be a bit, um, old-fashioned? A bit long in the tooth. But that make-believer takes things too far. Make-believer? The magician. The one that thinks he's all high and mighty. He had the gal to say to me, you're one of those funny types, right? What does he mean, one of those? Well, the joke's on him now. On him? Yeah, he got on everyone's nerves. The day of the murder. Go ahead. Nope, no way. Just forget I said anything. I bet he's still hiding something about Max. You said you saw the crime. Do you mind telling me what you saw? Well, the police told me that I can share my can't share my story with others. Don't say a word, pal. I've just got to have to let those lips stay zipped. That's not fair. I guess you're right. Maybe I can tell you a few details? But only if you can get old stiff lips here to make with the funny. Stiff lips. Wait, do you mean me? Nick, you can do it. <clears throat> What's the matter? Just getting ready. Okay, do you know why I, Phoenix Wright, am a great lawyer? Because I'm right all the time. Ah, <laughs> oh, that face. <laughs> At least his expectations are low. I wouldn't let him quit his day job. <laughs> Jeez, cut a guy some slack. At least it was funnier than Chuckles over here. It wasn't the greatest joke I've heard, but you did try, so I'll let you- I'll tell you what I saw. I'm sorry he's incapable of being funny, Moe. That night, once I had tucked myself into bed, I heard this amazing noise. It was incredibly loud. It sounded like a giant thump. Once I heard it, I jumped out of bed. That's when I saw. There we go, head and cape. Without question, without a doubt, it was that magician. That's all I saw, but it just proves how terrible that man actually is. He knows more about Max than he is letting on. Russell, how could anyone do this to you? I, I... I'm always taking this really hard. That's the ringmaster's daughter, Regina. Ever since she was a little girl, she's been watching the circus performances. Cuter than a little puppy Maltese, that Regina. If only my Larina was that cute. Larina? Ah, Larina is my daughter. She lives without her mother now. She lives with her mother now, God. It's true what they say about the tears of a clown. I've been friends with Russell ever since before the circus began. He was so selfless. He always thought about others before taking of himself. I find a way to return a favor. He always took such good care of me. I wish I would have thanked him more than I did. Oh. Ah, Ben. How's he doing? He's a ventriloquist, isn't he? That's right. Boy, was I surprised when they told me his secret. He's got a second mouth where his belly button should be. Just kidding. Ben wouldn't tell me a single thing about the murder. Ah, that's a simple problem to solve. He wouldn't talk if he doesn't have his puppet, Trilo. Oh. Trilo. If Ben doesn't have his ventriloquist puppet, you'll barely get a word out of him. Really? Hmm. Master and puppet. Take a look at my desk. Aren't I the most studious clown you've ever seen? Every free moment I have, I spend it studying or reading. The classic pull my finger or clown car maintenance and repair. Not to mention the bestseller Jean-Luc de la Duc's Guide to Obnoxious French Parros. Um, they all seem to cover rather basic topics though. Maybe he's just trying to cover all of his bases? Exactly, I want to be a renaissance clown. Too bad he didn't buy how to buy a funny clown. Us clowns really take our work seriously. I tried to hone my craft day and night with the latest ingested technology. Unicycles, trampolines, balancing balls, accordions. It looks like you've put quite a bit of wear and tear on that equipment. 
Well, the theme of my act as a clown is, how many ways can a fat funny guy fall down? I don't care what I break or how I break it, as long as it ends with me on my bum. Uh, I don't consider that funny, but okay. What's this? A banana peel? Oh my, oh my, what a wonderful fall, girly. You should remember that when you see a banana peel, get ready to fall down. That is one of the basic tenets of clownmanship. Aww. Every night I fall down 100 times to practice the proper banana peel break fall. Whoa. Dude. Wow, he really is a pro, huh, Nick? His falls are totally different than my slip. I look awful snazzy in these costumes. Um, did you just use the word snazzy in a sentence? I sure did. These are haute couture from the best international clown designers. At least that's what they said on the TV shopping channel I use. I like having a big collection so I can match my costume to my mood and my carrot. Haha. <laughs> you know, I only own one t-shirt. The rest are all clown costumes. Snazzy dresser, more like spazzy, spazzy dresser if you ask me. God. Moe, you've got quite the collection of pajamas. They really scream out to you. You think they're loud? Huh? I kind of thought they were refined. You know, a bit too adult for me to use on stage. That's why I use them as pajamas. Wait a second, he sleeps in clown costumes? Carrots are one of my trademark props. Yep, I saw you use them. You must believe in a carrot and no stick approach. You put the carrot out in front. For motivation, but I guess the trick is gauging what flavor you want each day? Exactly, you were really paying attention, weren't you? You know, I eat about five of these carrots every single day. If you eat that many, you've got to change up the taste every now and again. I didn't understand any of that, nor do I ever want to. <laughs> Fair. There's a hole in the ceiling. Why is there a hole in the ceiling? Well, um, I was riding a pogo stick and I guess I just overdid it a little. Dude, overdid it a little? What can I say? Sometimes things get a bit crazy in one's college days. Huh? Okay then, I think we've looked at everything and he's explained to us everything, so we're gonna just go. I've presented him with everything I can think of. I'm gonna assume he doesn't know anything about him but yeah okay no no okay so we're definitely gonna have to find his puppet it's gonna be somewhere that's Moe he's such a funny clown He's been a good friend to my dad for a really long time now. He was a good friend with the ringmaster? My dad always said, when it comes to who I can entrust the circus to, it's definitely Moe. Hmm. Yep, that clown is one lovable stooge. Don't you think so, Nick? Um, no comment. I'm getting better at using the profiles. Yeah, so we need to find his puppet. Which I don't think is around here. I also don't think it's around here. Ooh, yes. I'm always happy when you get the band. That means there's more info. He's back! Oh, it's my two sweeties. Welcome to the detention center. Oh, I didn't use them on the clown. I will use them on the clown after this. Did he just call me his sweetie? Again. What's on today's agenda? What can I help you with? Well, we've gathered quite a few clues. Wonderfully fantabulous. I mean fabulous. That's why we came to meet with you again. W w what's wrong? Quit making such a scary face. Okay then, Max, let's make this absolutely fabulous. 
We heard a lot about you at the circus, Max. Ah, you must mean from the dinosaurs who were those Jurassic... Who? How were those Jurassic geriatrics? Max, you aren't very popular with the other performers, are you? Yes, 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 sweetie. That's what they call jealousy. G-E-A-L-O-U-S-Y. They are absolutely jealous of my f absolutely fa fabulous self. People who really understand can see the obvious difference between us. People who really understand? For instance, my sweetie pie. Hmm, so Regina understands him, hmm? I plan on getting married to her. She is truly my sweetie pie princess. Whoa, that's so cool. It's already in the works. Oh? That's strange. Regina never said anything about actually marrying this joker. I have a theory. No, I don't have a theory, because we're going to have to prove that he didn't do it. Anyway. You met with the ringmaster on the night of the murder. Yes, I was with him around 10pm, once I was done with practice. I went to his room right after we finished. They found the ringmaster's body in the plaza in front of the lodging house. Yeah, I heard about that. He needed to step out for a bit, so I waited in his room for him to return. Huh? Sorry, Max. I have something I must attend to right now. Do you mind waiting for me right here? It's pretty cold outside. Where's your coat? It's alright. I'll be right back. It should only take about ten minutes. And then? I waited for him, but he never came back. Did he go to the plaza where the body was discovered? Possibly. The snow had tampered off a bit, tapered off a bit, but it was still very cold outside. But I have no idea what he went off to do. Well, he make absolutely yeah. Try to remember how to do this again. That's what to do. Uh, when do I present this thing again? Oh, here, okay, good. Meeting with Russell. Last night, you met with the ringmaster, correct? To negotiate your salary and such. Exactly, we reached an agreement about the salary for my six-month-old contract. That's the truth, the whole truth. What do you mean? You just went to his office to negotiate your new salary? I hate lies and I hate liars even more. What are you insinuating? Do you have any proof that I did something other than negotiate my fee last night? I have proof that you got the raise last week. That that's... It was on the table in the ringmaster's room. You weren't lying when you said that you received quite a raise. Is there a problem with being well compensated? Not with the compensation, just with the date. This is dated a week ago. Max, you finished your contract negotiation a week ago. F -f -f fabulous <laughs> Alright, I'll tell you the truth. That night, the ringmaster called me to his room. He called you? Why did he do that? Sorry, sweetie, that's private. The ringmaster called him. I wonder if there was some sort of problem. Um, Max, perhaps you could share with me what you two spoke about. Well, not if I don't have to. Isn't this why the ringmaster called you into this room last night? I don't think I have enough evidence yet. I should investigate and gather some more clues before I try again. We'll do that. So we need to find... Why the ringmaster called him? Oh, wrong way. It could be about. I can present people during the. Okay, so I could present Regina. Hmm, if he thinks he can kill the ringmaster, it's only just that he should die too. Moe! Sorry, I crossed the line, but he truly is a disgusting human being. Why do you hate him so much? 
Let me tell you this one story. The morning before the murder, something terrible happened. Max clung Ben right over the head as hard as he could. Ben? The ventriloquist with the speech impediment? You should go to the cafeteria and investigate for yourself. The cafeteria? Let's just say there's got to be something interesting there. <clears throat> well, he laughs. Ah, yes. The very big circus is very big, isn't it? You should always carry a map with you to get around. Ah, thank you. Um, this is an atlas. <sighs> oh, I killed myself, really. I'm dying here. Coronary, coronary. <laughs> No, he's just laughing to hear his own voice. Ma circus map added to the court record. We're gonna present everybody. That's the ringmaster's daughter, Regina. Ever since she was a little girl, she's been watching the circus performances. Cuter than a little puppy Maltese at Regina. Oh yeah, we did do this one. I presented- I just didn't present Max to him, I presented everybody else. Ah, that's where the cafeteria is. Okay, so we have to go through the big top. There's also a crow, whatever that may be. <coughs> Keep our cafeteria clean. I don't think they listened. Ooh, this place is gross. This must be because of last night. They didn't have time to clean up after dinner because of the murder. That reminds me, what was it that Moe said? He said that yesterday morning Max clonked Ben over the head here. He also said that there's gotta be something interesting there. Nick, what's gotta be interesting? Don't ask. Hmm. The kitchen is over here. Everybody must have taken turns cooking. There's a duty list posted here. I wouldn't mind trying my hand at cooking for this many people. Maya's killer hamburger. Don't try it. Well, would you, you'd try it, wouldn't you? Keep our cafeteria clean. Doesn't seem like anyone ever read this sign, huh? Maybe they should make it easier to understand. Clean it or die. Well, that would definitely make them clean up. Ah, a bulletin board. For, um, bulletins? It doesn't look like there are any useful clues posted here. Boring. Maybe we should leave a juicy tidbit for someone to read. Juicy? You know, like a fake clue? Hmm, maybe something like message from the killer. Give it up, Maya. You know Gumshoe would take it all seriously. This is strange. There's nothing on top of this stand. Look here. Max has written on it. It must be his VIP table. Dude! I get the people that like him. Isn't it a bit small to be a VIP table? You won't be putting a tank worth meal on this. Well, he could still eat hamburgers, right? Priorities. There are dirty dishes all over the place. It must have been too hectic last night to clean up. You know I can't stand the mess, Nick. I think you and I should clean this place up for them. Why do we have to clean up? One, because I hate dirty cafeterias. Two, because one bear is repeating. But this is a crime scene. We can't clean it up. We have to preserve it for evidence. Ah, you know I really hate dirty cafeterias. Not as much as I hate cleaning dirty cafeterias. It looks like they've left it exactly as it was on the night of the murder. They didn't seem too worried about cleaning up the dishes, did they? Hmm, look at all these dishes. It's making me hungry. Let's go get a burger at the snack stand outside. Once we're finished with the case. Alright, then let's get this over with, Nick. Here we go. Woo. Where's the mute button when you need it? <laughs> What's this? It must be a juice bottle or something. Ah, watch out, Nick. There's broken glass all over the floor. Hmm, a broken bottle just lying in the middle of the floor. Do you think it means anything? There's gotta be something interesting there. Huh? Looks like we're going to have to go back and meet with him. Him? Court record. The chair's been knocked over. That's what it looks like. It almost looks as if someone knocked it over in a struggle or used it for self-defense. Or maybe Regent just likes to eat his dinner in the cafeteria? 
There's two knocked over chairs and a broken bottle. And it's disgusting in here. Okay then. What do you think about this? Anything come to mind? Ah, you want some advice on your development as a comedian, right? I see. Well, this is what you do. When you tell a joke, imagine everyone's wearing underwear and dancing the lambada. Um, I think that's enough advice for now. Nick, he was giving you good advice. Don't be so close-minded. Okay, then. Then we're gonna present it to him. Would you mind to- ugh. Okay, we're still looking for his puppet, though, aren't we? Hmm. Then we're gonna go talk to him. And present him with her. Do I have to do them all again? Every time? Yeah. Da, da, da. Yes, I have this present. That's... It was on the table in the ring. You weren't lying when you said you received quite a raise. Is there a problem with being well compensated? Da, da, da. That was walk, lock one down. I'm gonna present Regina. Don't look at me like that. This isn't easy for me, you know. How about it, Max? How about what? What do you expect me to do with this? Let me guess. You're showing me that so I can make it disappear for you, right? Oh, that's wrong. No, no, no. Please don't make it disappear. And uh, Max, perhaps you could share with me what you two spoke about. Oh. Hmm. Maybe different trilogies. The thing is, this is taking a lot of my... I'm gonna present the broken bottle and if that's wrong, I'm gonna go back out. That's it. Isn't this why you were called to the ringmaster's room that night? But where did you get that? The cafeteria. But you already knew that, didn't you? Did he fight with the ventriloquist because both him and the ventriloquist told Regina that they liked her? Oh, of course. Okay. It fell and broke on the floor. He's still hiding something else. Max, what is it, my sweetie? I didn't fall and break on the floor. You used this bottle to hit the dude over the head. There we go. But, but Ben. You nailed him over the head with this bottle, didn't you? Oh, that, see the puppet? And that's why you got called to the ringmaster's room that night. That would make sense. F fabulous You might as well be a magician. There we go. Okay. The truth is, yesterday morning during breakfast, we had a run-in. You mean you had a fight with Ben the Ventriloquist? You could put it that way. Why didn't you fight with him? Ben seems like such a quiet man. We thought about my sweetie pie. There we go. You mean Regina? That ill-bred creep told my sweetie pie princess that he was in love with her. Would you put up with that? Ill-bred? Are you talking about the same Ben? Told her he was in love with her? Are you sure this is Ben we are talking about? 
All I can say is that he made me mad and I had to tap in on his hard head. That's when the ringmaster called me and I realized that it was my chance. Your chance? That's when I went to his room and laid it all out on the table. I asked him to let me marry my sweetie pie. What? The ringmaster told me that it sounds good to me. That's why my sweetie pie is my sweetie pie. And no one else's. Hmm, I see. Since Ben was causing me so much trouble, I realized I had to shut him up. Shut him up? He took the doll, didn't he? Um, what do you mean by shut him up? You don't know, do you, my sweeties? Trillo can't say a word. Not without Ben. Trillo? The puppet, the ventriloquist's puppet. His real name is Triloquist. But a puppet doesn't talk. I know, that's why I hid it. Before the police came and took me away, of course. If that puppet started flapping off at the balsa, I'd be screwed. No, I agree. I don't like him either. You hit him? You mean the ventriloquist puppet? You are so smart, sweetie. Um, where did you hide him? What, sweetie? You aren't thinking of trying to add him to my defense, are you? Well, Ben does seem awfully lonely without his puppet. Fabulous. That should have taught him a lesson. Okay, I hit Trillo in the ringmaster's room. You don't mind going there and getting Trillo for me, do you, my sweets? No problem. None at all. Thank you, Max. You know, I can't stand to see my sweeties in a jam. Then don't go hiding puppets! <laughs> yeah, let's go deal with the puppet. Huh, Ben's not here anymore. Yeah, I wanted to ask him something. It's cold out. He's probably in a tent. What do you think, Nick? I wonder if we've been making any progress. Don't be so negative. Of course we are making progress. But everyone's loved the ringmaster. And there's no sign of footprints on the scene. There's still a lot of mysteries left to be solved. Of course. And now Regina isn't here. I'm not seeing how that's related. It looks like- it looks the same as always. A great big mess. Considering how messy it is, I bet they wouldn't notice if another poster went missing. Will you just stop it, you sh poster pilferer? I'm just kidding. You know I already got one of these posters. You mean stole one of these posters. Yeah, uh, let's focus on what Max told us. He said that he hid Trillo somewhere in this room. Trillo. Oh, the ventriloquist puppet. We're looking for a puppet. Where could the puppet be? In here? Nick, look at all the cute trophies. Indeed, just look at all the awards this circus has won. Da, da, da. Whoa. Hmm. There's something shoved under the bookshelf. This is... That's Trillo. That's Ben's puppet. I think you're right. We'll give it back to him later. An operatic tenor who doubles as Ben's sidekick. Why do I have to carry this thing? Because you found it. I don't know. Anybody in the cafeteria? Ooh! Oh, hey, Ben! Ah, um, uh, he hello. Hello to you, too. It's awfully cold today, don't you agree? Y yeah, uh, I, d I do indeed. Don't you think it's cold, Nick? I don't see how talking about the weather is helping our case. Ah, Ben, this is yours, isn't it? Y yes! That's mine! Here you go. Trillo quiz returned to Ben. Alright, Maya, let's get going. That's time, isn't it? See you around, Ben. Uh, okay. So, Nick, where are we going next? Let's see. Maybe we should go talk to the clown once- Hey, wait! Who said that? What are you looking at? I'm right here, you blind wench. What's your problem anyways? Don't you know how to properly greet someone? 
Ben? Is that you, Ben? No, 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 no. I would never. It was me. Yeah, me. Down here. They are wearing the same outfit. <laughs> you, you're Trillo. This is Mr. Quiz to you, sir. Learn about some manners before you just blurt out my name. Now, try speaking to me again, but this time with some proper respect. Not again. Mr. Quist, is that better? No, look at me when I'm talking to you, you 8-bit excuse for an attorney. Dude! Trillo, we talked about insulting people, you promised. But he was mocking me, not being mean to bullies was not included in the deal. I'm sorry, Trillo. Nick, what just happened? I, I would like to answer that, ask that question as well. Hey, who do you think you are calling me a puppet? I miss what she was saying. <laughs> uh, why am I looking at this? What happened? Tell us what you know about the murder. You talk to me, I said you talk to me. Don't look at him when you're talking to me. Triloquist, you behave, young man. Shut up, Woody. What murder are you talking about? You mean the one where you date off the old man? I guess so. No need to make such a fuss about things. That old mutt paid us all peanuts. Trillo, you can't say things like that. I didn't raise you to be that kind of puppet. Did you have? Don't you have nerve pills or something to take right now? These two are really an odd couple, aren't they, Nick? Okay, okay, I'll talk. Bram's got clobbered over the head. Let me lay it all out for you. The pay sucks, the clown sucks, and my partner has his hands up my pants. Dude! <laughs> Your partner, you mean Ben? Yeah, the creepy old guy who never finds it in himself to leave me alone. Tell him to back off from me, will ya? He's just another one of the dorks around here. Oh my. But I'll be fair. In this cesspool of human garbage masquerading as performance, I found my Madonna. Your... Madonna? Regina, my lovely Regina. She is stunning, right, Ben? Well, I'm not sure if I would go that far. You'll have to excuse him. He does not understand of what he speaks. I, on the other hand, am an appreciator of true beauty, hence why I shall marry her. M -m -m marry The ringmaster got knocked upside his cheap head by that flying fraud. You mean Max Galactica? Why did you say that? Trillo, straighten up. Don't accuse people like that. Straighten up? I'm made of wood. Besides, you were there. You know what happened. You were there? Hehe, <laughs> if you're that interested, then I'll let you in on the facts. You, you're going to marry? Regina? That's right, she doesn't quite realize the joy that awaits her, does she? I think I'm beginning to see why she seemed troubled. Well, she... I don't care, it's my choice, not hers. We're getting hitched. Dude! I know you think that, but she, I, I feel like she should have an input. But what? I gave her a special gift. I gave her the wonderful gift of song. You gave her a song? Well, I am a renowned tenor. You'll be happy to know that I've decided to grace you with one of my songs. Me, 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 me. I want you to touch me. I want you to kiss me. I want you to. The rest is private. Dude, this puppet is. Well, um, the melody is pretty good. What melody? But those lyrics, I think they need a little work. Yeah, neither of the guys are giving her a choice. Also, based on her profile, she is 16! And Max is 21, and Ben is 31. Everything about this is not comfortable. Who asked you? I'm the artist here. Um, uh, thanks. Now that Trillo's here, is Trillo supposed to have an age? No, Trillo doesn't have an age. Okay. Yeah, look, she is... She is 16. Max is 21. <laughs> I agree, I dislike all of these guys. Now that Trillo's here, does that mean you can talk normally now? Hey, buttface! Ah. You must be looking forward to tomorrow, aren't you, Mr. Ambulance Chaser? Uh, you know, it's time to get rid of the pesky magician once and for all. Tr Trillo? Enough jibber jabber, let's get to court already. Ah, hey, wait a second. Nick, what's going on? He's a witness for tomorrow's trial? Ah. Yeah. I agree. 
This is bad romance. <laughs> hmm. What in the world happened with Ben and Trillo? Quite a pair of those two. What did that puppet- Ooh. Oh no, now what? We have a monkey. Um, what happened? Did he just steal our attorney's badge? Hey, welcome back, Nick. That that monkey- Every time we come in here, we get attacked at this point. Ah, my badge! That monkey stole it. What? <laughs> Mr. Attorney, that face was so cute. You look so completely dumbfounded. Vegeta! You, that monkey! Hey, no need to get angry, okay? But, but, my attorney's badge. Don't worry, I'll help you out. Okay, if you say so. If I don't get my badge back, how can I flash it? By the way, the monkey's name is Money. Money. Money the monkey. His name is Mon- Money? The monkey is called Money? Yes. Well, the rich ape just stole my attorney's badge. Mind if I get that back? I'll see what I can do. Even I have money problems. Huh? Whenever Money sees something shiny, he takes it back home. Haha, <laughs> that's pretty funny. Well, I guess I'll just have to find out where Money disappeared to. I think that's your best bet. You should probably ask Uncle Moe, he might know. Huh? You don't know? Well, money isn't exactly someone I am friendly terms with. What? He's not really the kind of animal I work with, even if he does need taming. Oh, I see. Go to Moe's. Hmm. I guess it is time that I revisit that kooky clown. Do you mind telling us a bit about Ben? Ben? You mean the guy that is always hanging around with Trillo? What do you mean, hanging around? Well, he was there when Trillo told me that he was in love with me. Trillo told you he was in love with you? Yes, he did. Kind of cute, don't you think? He is so smart and he's such a wonderful singer. I love him. But what about Ben? What about Ben? He's got nothing to do with me loving Trillo. What? The... Okay. Like sent through the hourglass, so are the days of the circus. Regina, you were proposed to, weren't you? Proposed to? Nope, that won't be for a while. Huh? Really? That's strange, isn't it, Nick? Yeah, Max and Trillo both said otherwise. They said they asked for her hand in marriage. Ah, but Max only talked to the ringmaster about it. I forgot about that. He asked the ringmaster for her hand, not Regina directly. Ugh. So I guess Trillo hasn't asked her directly yet? What? He's going to propose to me? I'm so confused. How about you, Maya? Huh? What? Who do you think I should go for? Max or Trillo? Wait. Wait. You do realize that Trillo is a puppet. Uh, I don't care that he's a bit stiff. Oh boy. I would recommend you go with Neither. Just saying. Huh, Detective Gumshoe took off already. Yeah, probably because we ditched him earlier. I bet he and the other cops got lonely and headed back to the precinct. Hey, Mole! Oh my, if it isn't Mr. Right all the time. <sighs> it's all right to be wrong every now and again, right? See, Nick, it just took a while for the joke to find his audience. <sighs> so what can I do for you? Do you remember a good joke you wanted to tell me? Pull up a chair or maybe just pull my finger and let me have it. We're going to get the same sound effect either way, aren't we? How'd you know I put a wood cushion on the chair? You really know what it takes to be a clown, don't you? Dude. All we want... So, about Regina. Regina is such a pure innocent child. She is such a cutie too. She was born and raised in a circus, you know. But that means she doesn't really know much about the world outside the big top. I can tell. Sounds like Pearly. For her, every child's dream if the circus is her everyday reality. She lives in a dream world. 
She sees dancing wild animals, men flying in the air, and one very funny clown every day. The funny thing is that all seems normal to her because it is her everyday life. I guess that explains why she thinks she can marry a ventriloquist's puppet. Don't ask me if her reality is a good thing or a bad thing, though. A clown sees life simply without complications. Have you ever heard of a monkey named Money? Ah, yes, Money. He stole my attorney's badge. Well, Money does love shiny objects. It makes sense that he'd swipe your badge. But under no circumstances can you chase after him. Uh, why is that? Oh, I know. You don't want to get involved in any monkey business, right? Exactly. Bravo, bravo. <laughs> Enough joking around, though. Money isn't considered a member of Regina's family. Then who does he belong to? I'll be happy to take you to where his owner is staying. You mean right now? Of course. Shall we go? Hmm, should we go with him now or wait a while? Let's go. Lodging house, third floor, Acro's room. I mean, that was on the map, so... <sighs> this is it. What's wrong, mister, right? I can't breathe. Don't be such a wimp. You only had to climb two flights of stairs. Anyway, this is the place. Acro's room. Acro? He's an acrobat. It seems like he's not around today. Uh, that's a big pile of junk over in the corner. I don't think it'd be wrong to assume that Phoenix's stuff is over there too. Just be careful to make sure you've got the right stuff. Thanks, Moe. See you later. Money the monkey. This bed is incredibly well made. It's almost like a maid made it up. Even the laundry on top of the bed is folded perfectly. Nick, there's nothing unusual about that at all. It's how things are supposed to be. Can't a man respect another man for doing something said man cannot do? <sighs> that is fair. Hmm. He's got a barbel. Look around. Everything he's got is for upper body training. Wait a second. These are the same machines I see on TV all the time. Hey, Nick. What? I don't have this one. This barbel here is a new model. Don't overdo it, Maya. You don't want to end up a muscle woman. And why not? Hey, hey, it's a monkey calendar. Whoever in this room must really love monkeys. Maybe a little too much? Whoa, I just realized that the year is almost over. Amazing how time flies. It's been one wild year, especially the last part. Well, we still got one last person to help this year. Max. Hey, the net's ripped. Money must be prone to breaking things. He's hardcore. Um, the net looks fine to me. You really think that he plays basketball? Exactly. She's allowed to be muscly if she wants to be. I think so. Monkeys live life above the rim, you know. You're joking, right? You think the monkey has got proverbial game? Of course. That monkey doesn't fake the funk on a nasty dunk. Well, a prehensile tail might be an unfair advantage. You can see the big top from the window here. There's no snow on top of the big top. Kind of weird, don't you think? The inside of the tent is warm, so any snow that lands on top probably melts. I guess you're right. The snow probably just slides right off. Holy cow. There's a fork and a mirror. Everything's shiny. Ooh, does, has it got the mirror from... There's even a really cheap looking knockoff wristwatch. Because isn't the mirror missing in the ringmaster's room? Or am I just reading the drawing wrong there? Look at this. It's a trophy and it's really heavy. Nick, I found it. Your badge. It's right here. Attorney's badge returned to its rightful spot on the pal. Thanks. You really saved me. Huh? What's the matter? Did you find something? Yeah. Check this out. It's a ring. There's something engraved on it. From T to R. From Trello to Regina? Ring put in pocket. Well, I think it's about time we wrap up our investigation. Do you think we'll win in court tomorrow? Who knows? Even I can't imagine what kind of testimony will come out tomorrow. I'm guessing Moe will be a witness in court tomorrow. Moe and maybe the puppet? Don't worry, Nick. No matter what, we've still got a magician on our side. That's good, because we might need some magic tomorrow.
This is the first time that this part of like the investigation has taken two hours instead of one. Usually like investigation takes an hour. That's usually how I count how long these streams are gonna be. So I, either this is gonna be a long case or just the initial investigation is a bit long. Good morning, Max. Why is he just throwing cards? Max? Mil milk. What? If I don't have a glass of milk before I go on stage, I just can't function, sweetie. S stage? Don't worry, there won't be a stage. All you have to do is sit down. I guess. Nick? Max is really nervous. That's understandable. Hey, my sweeties. W what You don't think I should fly, do you? Huh? You know, you've got to make a good first impression. When I enter the room, maybe I should fly in and warm up the crowd a little. No, 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 no. <laughs> we can't be having you flying around the courtroom. It just wouldn't be right. Imagine if you hit someone. Don't worry, Max. Just do what Nick says and everything will be okay. Oh, sweetie. What is it this time, Max? Why don't you try flying into the courtroom? I can see it now. The dashing young lawyer flying fabulously in from above. One glimpse of that and everyone in the room will be on your side. Why do I feel like a part of this case is going to be us unmasking how he does the flying? I don't know. It could very much be like part of the mystery. But I sort of want to know like if the game thought about like the logistics of having a magician fly. Anyway. Max? Really? No one needs to fly today. Nick? What's with that look in your eyes? I like the sound of that. Dashing young lawyer flying fabulously. He is annoying and I'm not looking forward to defending him. I'm looking forward to making everyone weep though. I don't know what it is but I love making all the, like, the moment the people break down in the game. Of course, I don't love the idea of people breaking down, but you get what I mean. <laughs> You're happy I'm playing the game. We're just gonna have to get through this one. Oh, what happened? What? Oh, Your Honor, get on with it. I forgot that she just gets on with it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, sorry, I just realized that the defendant's name is Billy Bob Johns. So, well, isn't the defendant also known as Maximilian Galactica? Yes, Your Honor, he does often go by that name. You know, my grandchild is a huge fan of his. I think everyone here wouldn't mind if we called the defendant Maximilian Galactica. Let's hope Francisco whips him a bit, yeah. Some good schadenfreude, exactly. This sounds more friendly. Um, I wonder if that is to our advantage. Miss von Karma, your opening statement, if you please. I hope you didn't bother thinking you'd win this one, Mr. Phoenix, right? Well... I would like to win this, but at the same time, if I don't, eh. That spirit channeling trial was a sham. I refuse to acknowledge its legitimacy. Uh, that's not how it works. It did not count, do you hear me? Again, that is not how that works. She must still be upset about what happened last time. You have no chance. Zero zilch nada. I'm not losing this case. Why, you ask? Because it is not in the nature of a von Karma to lose at anything. I love her. She is annoying, but I love her. I guess being born with the name von Karma is a free pass to be arrogant and annoying. Watch and learn, Mr. Phoenix, right? I'll show you the textbook procedure for proving how absolutely guilty you are. <laughs> yeah, I love Francesca. She is awesome, if a bit. <laughs> if a bit of von karma. <laughs> me, me, me? Guilty? What are you talking about? It will be my ultimate revenge. But it's not like it'll bring her dad back. There. Opening statement complete. Now let's hurry and wrap up this waste of time. She made no statement about the actual case. 
Very well. You may call your first witness, Miss Von Karma. Detective Dick Gumshoe, get up there now! <laughs> no, poor Gumshoe. Sorry to keep you from work, as I'm sure you need every penny you can earn, Detective. I feel like this is part of his job, though. He should be paid to be here. In a way. I don't know how actual, like, trials like that work, but I'm assuming, as a detective, being part of the witnesses is part of your job. Don't mention it. It's no trouble at all. I've been looking forward to this. Okay, very well. I would like you to begin by shedding light on the events in question. At your service, sir. All right, detective. You may proceed with your testimony. The night of the crime, snow was falling until 9.40 p.m., making it extremely cold out. Okay. All of the circus performers were gathered in the big top to practice their routines. The practice session broke up around 10 p.m. The murder itself took place in the plaza in front of the lodging house at 10.15 p.m. The victim was found bent over a wooden box dead as a doornail. The cause of death was blood force trauma that snapped a vertebrae in his neck. I see. He was beaten to death. Here is the autopsy report for the victim. The court accepts this into evidence. Time of death 1015 caused blunt force trauma at the back of the to the back of the head. Autopsy report added to the court record. A blunt object, hmm? Okay. I have a very weird guess that I'm gonna have to put here before we start getting into this. So the table in the ringmaster's office says that there's like footprints on them. So is there gonna be some kind of like they use that table and put it over, like, put it over something and that's how they, like, hit him without making footprints? And then, like, something like that? Could that be it? Don't know how, don't know why, but that was just my thinking with the footprints on the table. We have not figured out yet what's in the wooden box. Apart from the fact that he was found on top of the wooden box, nothing has set, been said about the wooden box. We also don't know actually yet what he has been hit with. Like, the actual, like, uh, murder weapon has not been named or found. Very well, Mr. Wright. You may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Question everything. Night of the crime. Da -da, press. The wooden box. The bigger mystery. Exactly. Let me ask you about the snow. It was nearly a blizzard up until the time of the crime. Did it pile up? It wasn't such a big deal. Maybe about an inch and a half was on the ground. The snow froze in place and stayed on the ground until the next day. I mean, that could also be. It could be Max being rude. That wouldn't surprise me either. I just thought considering it's like a detail. It's either a detail towards like Max's rudeness or it could be something like a trick. Although then my question is why would you use that table when supposedly if Max is is innocent like then he sh he was in that room while waiting for the ringmaster to return so then how could they get at the table? So I think Max being rude and putting his feet on top of it is probably the more likely option when it comes to like why there's footprints on the table. Am I overthinking this game? I feel like I'm either over or underthinking this game at any point. Like sometimes I overthink something and it's like, it's just very simple. And sometimes I underthink this game in a weird way and it's just like, God, I did not expect that to be connected to that in that weird way. So that's why I'm not like always overthinking. I'm always like trying to figure out everything and I just can't. This game is too weird for that. <laughs> Stuff just turns up and you're just like, where did you come from? The snow froze in place and stayed on the ground until the next day. Hmm. The snow. Let me see. There's got to be more to this. Uh, what's the matter, Nick? I need to take a look at the court record. Mr. Gumshoe, what were the members of the circus doing on the night of the crime? Wait, 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 wait. Talking of the court record. Give me a sec, give me a sec. Wait. 
wasn't there... Hmm... That's the way it is. <laughs> exactly. I have a feeling. But this is purely based on like the backgrounds in the sh in like when we've done the investigation. But I felt like the the place where like the box is and the place where the legs sticking out of the from the box. But on this picture, there's snow underneath him, so he's definitely killed after. And the autopsy report also confirms that. So I'm just that was just me overthinking something. Mr. Gumshoe, what were the members of the circus doing on the night of the crime? All of the circus performers were gathered in the big top to practice their routines. When you say all of the circus performers, who do you mean? Everyone but the dancers and staff were there. Regina the Animal Tamer, Moe the Clown, Ben the Ventriloquist, and of course, the defendant, Maximilian Galactica, and his victim, the Ringmaster. Oh, I almost forgot, Regent the Tiger was there as well. Out of curiosity, what about the circus monkey? When I was investigating yesterday, he happened to snatch my wristwatch. Detective, you are welcome to file a police report after these proceedings. Fair. The practice session broke up around 10pm. After the practice was over, where did everyone head off to? Regina was playing with Regent while Moe went back to his room tired from work. Fair. Ben the Fertriquist went to the front gate absorbed in his own world. The ringmaster and Max went off to the ringmaster's room to talk privately. Talk privately, huh? That's awfully suspicious. You wouldn't happen to know what they were talking about, would you? It seems they were negotiating Max's salary. Actually, Max was asking for Regina's hand in marriage. The murder itself took place in the plaza in front of the lodging house at 10.15. Yeah, exactly. Where did... what? I'm assuming the acrobat just isn't that wasn't there. It's just on vacation for the week. I'd like you to be a bit more specific about the events at 10.15pm. Oh, um, okay, not a problem, pal. We've got a witness that told us how the whole thing went down. How? This is totally meaningless. Time to move on. Hmm, alright. We'll just have to revisit that testimony later. Detective Gumshoe, would you mind telling us how the victim met his end? The victim was found bent over a wooden box dead as a doornail. A wooden box? That's right. The victim must have been carrying the wooden box when he was killed. Oh, that's the logic. Carrying the box, huh? It was a rather strange wooden box, your honor. What do you mean? Well, it was much heavier than it looked. Not to mention it was locked. Locked, you say? Hunt over 20, both small but strong lock. This may be my only chance, so I might as well ask some questions. Oh... Uh... Do you mind telling us what was inside that box? Well, when we found the box, it was locked tighter than Fort Knox. So we took it back to the station and cracked it open. All that was inside was this little bottle. Bottle? What is that, detective? Exactly what it looks like, your honor. It's a condiment bottle. What's inside the bottle? It's filled with pepper. Pepper. Why in the world was it blocked in that box? Why in the world was it locked in that big box? My question exactly. There was only one little bottle in that huge box. I wonder if that was some sort of special meaning. Found it, that it contains pepper. The cause of death was blunt force trauma that snapped a vertebrae, a vertebrae in his neck. According to the autopsy report, the murder weapon was a blunt object, correct? You've done your homework, pal. And you haven't found this murder weapon, have you? The police are searching for it as we speak. My theory is that it is something that perpetrator rang off with. You would think so, especially since you didn't find it on the scene. No, no, no. I bet he made it disappear with magic. Ho, ho, ho. Well, I think we have a good feel for the details of the event now. I guess that's all we're gonna get out of Gumshoe in this case. You mean all we're gonna get out of him is that little bowl of pepper? Now that we have wrapped up with the detective, I'd like to call my next witness. Uh, I'm not even off the stand yet. Obviously, but that's due to you being slow and unable to take a hint. I don't know, but wrapped up has such a mean sound to it. I'm a sensitive guy. Thank you very much, Detective Gumshoe. You may step down. Miss Von Karma, call your next witness. I would like to call Mr. Benjamin Woodman to the stand. I'm very happy that... This time, we don't have to make Gumshoe sad. <laughs> she must be talking about Ben the Ventriloquist. I wonder if Trilla will show up on the stand as well. 
Oh god. Please state your name and occupation for the record. My full name is Trillo Quist. I am employed as an operatic tenor. Uh, excuse me? The witness called to the stand was one Mr. Benjamin Woodman from Trillo Quist. That rope must be cutting off your circulation. I said that I was a singer. Maybe you don't believe me. Fine. I'll grace you with a song. Ahem. Me, 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 me. The world of the law. Exciting and daring. Guilt or innocent. Decided by a judge dressed up like a woman. Well, what do you think? It had a good rhythm. <laughs> it's just the lyrics. They leave something to be desired, so to speak. T Trillo, you know better than to insult a judge. Shut up. Just look at your nose. You would think you'd have the sense to fix it. It's so ugly I want to punch you in the face and the off chance swelling would help. Dude! You know what? Your nose is the reason you'll never be an A-list star. Celebrities must really enjoy saying everything that flashes into their minds. What's going on here? Order, order. I had meant to know who the witness is. Don't, don't worry about me, sir. I'll let Trillo handle this. I'm not worried about you one bit. I'm worried about getting testimony in. Ouch. You won't get anywhere trying to figure out this witness. Now let's proceed. You won't get anywhere trying to figure out this witness. But we need to figure out this witness. <laughs> what you witnessed. Once practice was over, I left the tent with the stooge, I mean clown. Once we got to the lodging house, I ditched him and went back to the plaza's entrance. That's when I saw Max heading towards the scene of the crime. He was the only one heading that way. How could that punk not be the killer? Then the police showed up and took Magic Boy away. You saw Maximilian Galactica heading towards the scene. You're sure of that? Without a doubt, he had on his silk hat, cloak, and a dumb white roses on his chest. How can you mistake someone with that crazy getup and his nose stuck up so high? That that's enough. I think we all get the picture. Just one thing. You said you ditched the clown. That's right, dress boy. Well, since you weren't with him, couldn't that mean the clama clown uh, couldn't that mean the clown committed the crime? Hmm, he's got a point. What a shame. It was a nice theory, but the clown can't be the culprit. Why is that? Here's absolutely here's absolute proof. Ah, silk hat? This was found at the scene of the crime. It belongs to the defendant. Ah. Without question, he was wearing his signature hat during practice. If the clown was the murderer, there would be no reason for his hat to be at the scene. Hmm. Well done, Miss Von Karma. Your prosecu prosecutorial skills are unrivaled. Well done. Thank you for stating the obvious. Mr. Phoenix, right? What do you have to say? Uh, okay, I guess she's the boss again today. What you witnessed. Once practice was over, I left the tent with the stooge. That is some weak evidence, I agree. Anybody could wear that hat. The clown, you're talking about Moe? Of course I'm talking about that old fart. He's so pathetic, I can't stand him. Just a little bit of exercise and his makeup is running all over the place. One practice was over, he was ninth tenths of the way to keeling over for good. Poor guy. We didn't have any choice, so Ben took him back to his room. When it comes to being a first place loser, that guy's ahead of the pack. Hmm, then what happened? Once we got to the lodging house. Why the plaza's entrance? To do some thinking, of course. It was awfully cold out that night, especially with all the snow around. Wouldn't thinking in your nice warm lodging house have been a better idea? Objection! Mr. Phoenix Wright, I think you should leave the thinking to the witness. But I'm a good thunker, <laughs> at least my teachers always said I was. That's when I saw Max, heading towards the scene of the crime. Are you sure it was really Max Galactica? Of course I'm sure. How could you mistake someone wearing such a snobby three-piece getup? Snobby three-piece getup? Get the wax out of your ears, lawyers, nowadays. You're, like, talking to a brick wall. Max's three-piece getup. Jeez, could you be any more dense altogether now? Silk hat, cloak, white roses. Thank you. Nick, I think you should put a little bit more effort into preparing your questions. He was the only one heading that way. How could that punk not be the killer? You saw Max and only Max, right, Trillo? That's right, and that makes him the killer. There was only one person headed that way that night. Hmm. 
That makes quite a bit of sense, and it makes Max one suspicious character. There's more to this story than meets the eye. Is there something amiss in this? There's no proof it was Max. Wait a second. There's no proof that the witness saw Maximilian Galactica. Hey, hey, you still don't get it, do you? I saw what I saw. It was Max's three-piece joke of a costume. All right, let's say it all together now. Yeah, thank you. I think you should study up on your cele celebrities, Mr. Wright. Great, I'm getting shut down by a toy. Then the police showed up and took Magic Boy away. Around what time did the police arrive at the scene? Hmm, I suppose that would have been around... Hey, what time was it? Um, I think it was around... I'd say a bit after 10.30, I think. Practice ended at 10, so you hung around the lodging house the entire time? I, I, I guess that sounds about right. Wasn't it awfully cold? I can't believe you'd just stand outside in that weather. Well, uh, the truth is... Will you shut up, you big-nosed dope? Why are you telling him anything extra? Why can't you believe that we just stand outside in that weather? Well, maybe you were waiting for someone. Well, well, well what? You s who said we were waiting for someone? Mr. Phoenix Wright, we can all do without your off handed theories. But this witness, he's cracking under the pressure already. I'm onto something. Hmm, Mr. Wright. Why do you, who do you suppose the witness was waiting for in the cold that night? Well, if he was waiting outside in the cold, it was for one person. And one person only. He was waiting for the animal tamer, Regina. Did the puppet just explode? You were waiting outside for Regina to come back to the lodging house. Am I mistaken? Is this true? Well, I, um, you can't really ask me that question. Who cares who I was waiting for that night? What's important is what I saw, don't you forget it. Well, 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 the puppet may be a bit stiff, but he's right. Uh, it seems that at this stage I have no reason to doubt this witness's testimony. And there are clearly no conclusive contradictions. He's right. That is a good shock animation, I agree. A brilliant judgement, your honour. Now let's move along with the testimony. Hmm, Trillo wouldn't happen to be an to happen. Mm. Trillo wouldn't happen to have an ulterior motive for incriminating Max, would he? Well, Max is part of that bitter love triangle with Regina, which is probably why Max conked him over the head. Um, Nick, wasn't Ben the one who got knocked over the head? Um, yeah, I think so. I don't know anymore. Okay, we're gonna have to present something. I have This is the thing. This is where I'm like I'm gonna like my only case of evidence that I would be able to pull here is the fact that anybody could be wearing that outfit. But like, is that- how can I prove that? Also, I think I chose the wrong answer in this question because it didn't give me anything. It didn't give me a minus, but it also didn't give me anything new, and usually those questions give you something new. Wait. Wait a minute. Okay, I'm gonna press this one again. One person had it way. We also have the victim. Hmm, that makes quite... T -t 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 where was... That's a bit strange, don't you think? What's strange? That you only saw Max. 
Doesn't it seem like you should have seen someone else as well? What? Where are you going with this, Mr. Wright? Who else do you suppose this witness could have seen? Mr. Russell. That's the victim. That's correct. If Trillo was at the entrance to the plaza, he should have seen the ringmaster as well. Aha! Obviously, the ringmaster arrived at the scene of the crime before the witness. Could have seen him. Anyone with sense would have figured that one out. What are you talking about? The ringmaster and Max went together to the ringmaster's room. Is that according to the defendant? A likely story. If Maximilian Galactica was supposed to be in the ringmaster's room, why was he just as the witness stated at the scene of the crime? I see. This is... this is... Alright. There's obviously a reason why this witness was there that night. He spent all that time waiting for Regina to arrive. Moreover, even if someone else would have walked right in front of him, I doubt he would have paid them a second thought. Ah. That makes perfect sense. What did you just say? The witness saw the defendant at the scene of the crime. However, he did not see the victim on the way to his eventual demise. If you accept that, then you must accept that there is a high likelihood that... He could have missed someone else other than Max heading- Ow! There is absolutely no proof that the witness was waiting for the animal tamer. Um, um... I guess you got me. Alright, alright. I'll spill the beans for real this time. It's true, I was waiting for Regina. Pain! <laughs> Don't volunteer things! Mr. Quist, tell us the truth this time, and I mean the whole truth. Were you or were you not waiting for Regina at the entrance to the lodging house? I was. I was waiting to propose to her. You were what? Waiting to propose? What's the matter? You think that humans have a monopoly on marriage? Uh, that the matter of puppet marriage is not under review in this case. You're the judge. I mean, look at your horrible outfit. More pain. <laughs> Hmm, thanks to your bumbling, my perfect plan is not so perfect anymore. Now we have to waste time getting to the bottom of some silly proposal by a puppet. About the proposal. Don't be so surprised that I was going to propose to Regina. I even had something to give to her. I kept it in my pocket, waiting for the chance to propose and give it to her. Of course, I also had it in my pocket that night. It was a present for her. In the end, I wasn't able to give it to her, so I've still got it in my pocket. Uh huh. You are going to propose? You? A puppet? Don't be so obtuse. Just because I'm a puppet doesn't mean I can't love. I guess you're right. Just because I'm old doesn't mean I couldn't propose to her, too. Exactly! Uh, his honor is looking a little less honorable right now. I agree with that. Okay, Mr. Wright, please continue with your cross examination. Sigh. Yeah, I've got the... Po I'm assuming what he said he had in his pocket was the ring, and I've got the ring. What was with that sigh at the end? Let's press everything again. Don't be so surprised that I was going to propose to Regina. By proposal, you mean proposing marriage, correct? To Regina? Of course that's what I meant. What kind of stupid question is that? I wasn't going to propose that I wasn't going to propose that we become some sort of outlaw biker gang together. Right, Ben? Y yeah. Got it. That's the truth. I even had something to give to her. What was it exactly that you planned on giving her? You know exactly what I was going to give her, numbskull. The only thing I could find that could match Regina's beauty. Answer his question. What was it? You're gonna die when you hear this. It's an engagement ring. Engagement ring? Whoa, those two nearly fell out of their chairs. Mr. Phoenix Wright's joke has gone too far. Time for this to end right here. Francisca's whip looks like it's about to lash out at almost anything. One hit from that thing will probably shut someone up for a long time. Uh, yeah, we don't care. Push anyway. It may be something of a joke, but this is a historic moment. The first time that a puppet has ever pup Ow! I advise you to cut this argument short. 
I'm going to have to agree with the defense here. Will the witness please revise their testimony? Specifically about the engagement ring. I'd like to stick to facts, not sociology. You sure do enjoy sweating the details, especially for a man in a black bathrobe. I plan on giving an engagement ring to Regina. An engagement ring? Uh-huh, it's actually a diamond-shaped stone cut from glass. Even more brilliant than the real thing. I think Regina is going to love it. So instead of getting her what stereotypically most girls want for an engagement ring, aka an actual diamond, you got her a, ne a cheap glass knockoff. And then expects Regina, who is basically the princess of this circus, to love it. Well, that very happy you didn't give it to her. I don't think what would have happened to you. It's just a ring. What's the matter, Nick? Well, there's got to be something I can catch him on. I kept it in my pocket, waiting for the chance to propose and gift to her. Whose pocket was the ring in? Mine, of course. What a stupid question. You've got to be kidding me. You've got to think Ben could pull that off? I'm s sorry, re really. You don't have to apologize for that. He's the one who should be apologizing. Really? Of course, I also had it in my pocket that night. It was a present for her. So you went to the lodging house to give it to her? That's right. I tried to give it to her during practice so many times that I lost count, but that uppity snob kept getting in the way. Uppity snob? He couldn't possibly be talking about Maximilian Galactica. When I get a hold of him, I'm gonna saw his wood block in half and not with magic. Well, they always say that love creates rivalries. So what about this present? In the end, I wasn't able to give it to her, so I've still got it in my pocket. So you are still thinking of trying to give it to Regina? Of course I am. I spent three months' salary on this thing. I'm not going to give up that easily. Hmm, I wonder how much he receives for appearing in the circus. Probably way more than he deserves. How about it, Nick? I think it's about time to unwrap this toy's testimony. That's the spirit, Nick. Give him help. The judge has that dazed and confused look again. Maybe he should get out more. Can I... Present... And then present the ring. Objection. Trillo, do you mind if I show you something? What is it? What are you talking about? Uh oh, looks like they're going to double team me now. Do you recognize this ring? Ah, that's 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 mine. Give it back, thief, thief. Didn't you just testify about this very object? I believe you said. In the end, I wasn't able to give it to her, so I've still got it in my pocket. Why then do I have it right here? Ah! What is going on here? That's, that's... Ben, say something! Uh, don't put me on a spot like that, Trillo. I found this in Money's room. M m money's room? You mean a room they put money? Like a bank for? Ha! That filthy monkey is gonna get what's coming to him. Mr. Quist, I would prefer if you avoided slandering innocent fiats in my court. Well, Your Honor, money really is a monkey. In every sense of the word. Ah, I see. Well then. Monkey- Money likes to go after the shiniest things that he can get find and gather them up. Shiny things? Trillo. When was this ring stolen from you? Well, I suppose it was that time, you know, that night, the night of the crime. What did you just say? Details. I need more details. Well, it was stolen right after Max showed up in the plaza. Right about when you saw the defendant walk past, correct? Well, um, I guess you might um, be able to say that. The ring might have, well, I could have been taken around that time. Poor Ben. Ben, what's with you? Oh, whatever. It has nothing to do with anything, especially not who committed the murder. It's not for you to decide what has 
to do with what? Now, Trillo, back to the topic at hand. I haven't admitted a thing. Not I, Mr. Trillo Quist. What did you do when the ring was taken, Trillo? You know exactly what I did. I chased after that ring, snatching mon money monkey monkey money. Dude. But you weren't able to catch up with him, were you? It's all this so slow loafy fool called Ben's fault. While he was fumbling his way through the snow, that dumb monkey was able to get away. That is indeed an incredible shame. Well, this does indeed prove one very important point. Prove an important point. What point could that possibly be? That he's lying. Because he wasn't there the whole time. There's a huge contradiction in this witness's testimony. C contradiction? The witness just testified the following to the following effect. Up until the police arrived, he didn't move from the entrance to the plaza. However, the witness just stated that he chased after Money the monkey. When the witness was off chasing Money, there was no one watching the plaza. What is the meaning of all this, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Where are you going with this little theory of yours? I'm saying that there is no possible way that this witness saw the plaza the entire time. That's where I'm going with this little theory, which leads me to my next point. It is entirely possible that someone other than the defendant was at the scene. Interesting, Mr. Wright. Well then, tell me this, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Do you have any proof that something slipped past this vigilant ventriloquist? Well, he obviously didn't see the victim, the ringmaster, arrive on the scene. However, that doesn't change the fact that he saw the defendant arrive. The witness is lying, he's blinded by his rivalry with Max. Well, the defense argument does hold water. This witness does have a history of animosity towards the defendant. What? How dare you? I wouldn't lie just to get the dork face in trouble, he's not even worth it. I saw him, no doubt about it. I saw that worthless liar. Well, just for clarity's sake, let's flesh out exactly who you saw on that night. Ha, I've told you so many times, you'd think you'd know by story, not changing. You've already changed your story, stick boy, and I'm sure it will change some more. Where there is one lie, there are usually many more behind it. Exactly, Maya. That's why we have to keep after him. Yeah. Here we go. I'll give you that I was waiting for that night for Regina, but that doesn't change the fact that I saw Max in the plaza that night. He showed up after I had been waiting there for about five minutes. He said I said good evening to him, but he didn't even acknowledge my presence. I'm absolutely sure it was him. I saw Maximilian Galactica at the scene. There's no way I could mistake someone wearing those three ridiculous symbols. Hmm. So that means that money didn't show up until after you saw Max? That's right. Money ran up less than a minute after I saw Max. Then money snatched the ring and you went chasing after him. How long was it until you came back to where you were waiting? Well, let's see. I'd say about, I suppose, five minutes, I think. So the victim could have arrived on the scene in that five minute stretch. Mr. Wright, please proceed with your cross-examination. I'll give you that I was waiting that night for Regina. So you were only concerned with waiting for Regina that night. That means you probably wouldn't have noticed if someone else showed up. You should think about how many eyes I actually have. I've got four, you know. Four. F-O-U-R. Counting Ben, of course. With that many eyes, do you really think someone would have slipped by me? Four eyes is an awful lot of attention directed at one area, I suppose. Yikes, the judge is even more dangerous to our case than Trillo. But that doesn't change the fact that I saw Max in the plaza that night. He showed up after I had been waiting there for about five minutes. Oh, uh, God, I need to go back, I need to go back. I forgot to... Press this one. But at what time would you say that event took place? You're one of the dumbest people on the planet if you can't figure it out yourself. You already know that practice was promptly at 10pm, and you already know that I went to the lodging house right after practice. You don't need to be a brain surgeon to know around what time it was when I saw him. Just add 10 more minutes, I'm sure you can do that. Now what time was it? Indeed, what time was it? Hmm, what time was it? Let me think about that for a second. Yeah, well, I'm not good at math. Sigh, it was 10pm. 10, 10 <laughs> Ah, yes, that sounds about right. It sounds about right, because that's the time when I saw Max on the scene. I... No. I said good evening to him, but he didn't even acknowledge my presence. 
So you testified that you said good evening to Max that night. You must enjoy asking incredibly obvious questions. You say good morning in the morning and good afternoon during the day, right? And it's obvious that I'd say good night to someone at night. What, Ben? You've got something to add? Let me guess. That's not it, Trillo. You say good evening at night. I'm sorry, Trillo. Mr. Quist, I would prefer if you kept your ventriloquist act outside of the courtroom. Impossible. A performer lives and breathes his performance. You should know better. There's got to be something wrong with this bit of testimony. Would they actually say goodnight to Max after the fact that Max literally hit them over the head with a bottle? And I'm using them because at this point Trillo and Ben are basically one in my head. So if Trillo said, why would Trillo say good evening to the dude that hit them over the head with a bottle? Isn't that a bit strange to you? What do you mean? Well, if you hate Max so much, why would you bother being nice to him? Exactly. It strikes me as somewhat strange. Why would it strike you as strange? Exactly. How is it strange to be cordial to one of your co-workers? Ben Triloquist. Exactly. Well, if it was simply just being cordial to a co-worker, I would understand. Ow, that hurt. Maybe you should think of having some proof before you start flapping next time. Proof is everything in this world. You should have learned that back in grade school. There's no reason that Trillo would ever say something nice to Max, but how do I go about proving that with the evidence? Bluffing is everything in this world, but I'm sure you already learned that one. I guess I can give it a shot. The witness will resume his testimony. Can I present the literal thing he hit him over the head with? Trillo, is it not true that you had a fight with Max on the day of the murder? A fight? A fight over Regina, to be exact. It wasn't that big of a deal. It was just an argument, a disagreement at most. A disagreement usually doesn't end with someone getting clonked over the head. That morning, Ben got clobbered over the head by Max, didn't he? W what? Is that an admission of assault and battery? Before we handle that, we should wrap up the defendant's murder charge first. The truth is that on the day of the crime, the defendant and witness had a huge fight. There's absolutely no way they would have suddenly become cordial that evening. Moreover, just consider the personality of the witness on stand. There's no way a puppet, this loot, would just up and say good evening to his rival. I love that he explodes too. Are you saying this witness is lying? That he is trying to frame the defendant by claiming to have seen him at the crime scene? Sounds like it. I, I didn't tell a single lie. Honestly, I just... That's enough from your Mr. Quist. Mr. Wright? Yes, your honor. Let's clarify this testimony for the court. Could you explain your theory about who the witness actually saw that night? I think he saw the defendant. In his outfit. But that would make no sense, because then how did you get the amount, the moment where the defendant and the, No, he saw a different person. He saw somebody in his outfit. I'm overthinking it. It is my belief that the witness did indeed see someone that night. It was just someone else. That's who he said good evening to. What kind of theory is that? The correct one. Furthermore, I don't believe the person the witness saw was Max at all. Wh what? If he had truly met Max that night, there would have been no greeting at all. Which means there's only one proper answer. The person the witness saw that night was not Maximilian Galactica. That is why Trillo made the effort to greet whoever it was that he saw that evening. Or good evening, as he put it. Uh, what in the world, you... Would the defense kindly explain who it was Trillo saw that evening then? Uh... Would it be the victim in... Yeah, exactly. He saw the victim in the outfit, which was my original theory. It wouldn't be anybody else. Considering the ill temper of this witness, there's only one person he would greet. No, because Moe is already dropped off. It can't be Moe. And it wouldn't be Regina, because then it wouldn't just be a good evening. Yeah, the victim. 
It must be Regina. It's Regina, right? She's so cute. No, Your Honor. It is not Regina. If it was Regina, Trilla would have given her the engagement ring as a present. Oh, yeah. I suppose you've got a point there. It was Russell Berry. The victim himself, was it not? You are correct. It was indeed Russell Berry. The person you saw that evening was the victim, the ringmaster Russell Berry. That's why you greeted him, Trillo. Isn't that correct? Answer the question, Mr. Quist. Order, order. How do you respond to this? Wait, wait, wait a second. Well, at first I thought it was the old man. But, but once I got a better look at him, it was obviously Master... How can you confuse those two? I think it is high time that we clear the air about this question. Mr. Quist obviously witnessed a single person in the area of the plaza that evening. The problem is identifying exactly who that person was. Was it Maximilian Galactica? Or was it the ringmaster, one Mr. Russell Berry? The prosecution argues that it was the defendant that the witness saw that night. The witness has clearly stated that he saw the defendant's three symbols. Three symbols. Alright, this is getting old. Come on, man, you've got to remember them by now. Here we go again. Everyone all together now. Ow. Yes, yes, we know. The silk hat, cloak, and white roses. A silk hat and a cloak. Anyone could wear them. They'd even look good on me. What was that? Well, the witness has endlessly repeated that he saw Max's three symbols. However, how do we really know it was Maximilian Galactica? It could have been someone else dressed up as him. Exactly. Possibly even Russell Berry. What? Miss von Karma. Do you have clear evidence that the person the witness saw was the defendant? Well, I... If that's the case, then it is impossible for me to make a judgement at this point. Yes, I think we finally won a point in this one. That is very unfortunate. Huh? You're just a little too excited for your own good, Mr. Phoenix Wright. What do you mean by that? You merely established one thing from this witness. You established that this witness saw one person in the plaza that night. I applaud you on your effort, but... But? Who that person was can only be answered by the next witness. Huh? Your Honor, the prosecution will provide, beyond a shadow of a doubt, an answer to that question and evidence that clearly establishes one thing. That there is no one other than Maximilian Galactica responsible for this crime. Okay, very well. The court will take a ten minute recess. During that time, I request the prosecution prepare the next witness. Court is now in recess. Okay. I'm gonna guess that the afternoon witness is gonna be Moe because he's the other one that says that he definitely saw Max. Um, but also, looking at the time, I have not been streaming for nearly three hours and if I start the next bit, that's gonna be another hour. So I think this is a good place to end the stream. So thank you for joining me. Um, next stream for this game I've not planned yet, so I will get back to you on that. I will be back on Monday during my regularly scheduled screaming. Probably with more Nancy Drew since we are in the middle of that game. Thank you for joining me, and I will see you later. Bye-bye.